Oklahoma State has never had a better chance to make history. Five games remain for a Cowboys team with an offense as lethal as any in the country. Whedon to Blackman has been a defensive coordinator's nightmare. But speaking of a defensive nightmare, Oklahoma State has one of their own today. And his name is Robert Griffin. RG3 is in the Heisman mix, and he leads the nation in touchdown passes per game. And Baylor is thinking upset. The Bears and Cowboys fire it up in Stillwater now. Welcome to Stillwater and Boone Pickens Stadium, where two of the most explosive offensive teams in the nation meet today. It's Oklahoma State taking on Baylor, and they are fired up in Cowboys country. Oklahoma State is number three in the Tostitos BCS standings. They also know that next week, either number one or number two will have a loss. So if the Cowboys win out, they are all but guaranteed a spot in the BCS title game. A lot on the line as we welcome you to Stillwater, everyone. Bob Shoes and alongside the coach, Bob Davey. Janine Edwards will join us in just a moment. It's there for Oklahoma State. Their dream season, it's now attainable. The fans here know it. You think the players know it. They have a big test out in front of them, though, today with Baylor. One thing about Oklahoma State, they don't follow that old school plan for success. We used to talk all the time, Shoe, about defense wins championships. Forget about all that. Around here, it's all about the offense. Their offense, an up-tempo, fast-paced, no-huddle, two superstars in Brandon Whedon and Justin Blackman. A lot of people don't realize a big reason for their success. First in the nation in turnover margin. Their defense may have poor overall stats, but they forced a lot of turnovers. Shoe around here, it's all about the defense. Just get the ball back for the offense because you know this offense can score touchdowns. Plus 15 in the takeaway ratio. Number one in the country in interceptions. It's a defense that is opportunistic. It's an offense that lives off of those opportunities, and they've got a quarterback that can play. Boy, we watched Brandon Whedon yesterday, both of us, for the first time. I think the first thing you're going to notice about him as a fan at home, how quickly he gets the ball out. You can tell he was a baseball player. He was a pitcher in the majors, but he actually was a shortstop as a young man. He gets the ball out of his hands as fast as any quarterback I have seen. I mean, this is a quick-paced offense, Oklahoma State. Yeah, Mike Gundy actually compared him to someone almost turning a double play. Exactly. When you look at how quickly he's able to release the football. And speaking of quickly, we are expecting the Cowboys to take the field any moment here at Boone Pickens Stadium as this place has been packed for the last several hours. Number three in the country. Here come the Cowboys. So it's a great scene, obviously, here. It's a scene that could be spoiled, though, if RG3 continues to play the way he has this season. Baylor puts up almost the same type of offensive numbers that Mike Gundy has to worry about today. We'll talk about Baylor more in a moment, but let's go down to Janine with Oklahoma State's coach. Mike, what did you stress to your guys those last few moments in the locker room? Well, I want them to come out and play and not play with any pressure. Just want them to have a lot of fun, play for the guy next to them. You know, it's, it should be important to them what the tape looks like tomorrow when they're sitting next to their teammate in that video room. That's a good point. Now, we know this thing's going to be a shootout. What do you think will ultimately determine the outcome? Well, it always comes down to tackling and taking care of the football. Have a good game, Coach. Thanks. All right, Janine, thanks very much. Janine mentioned it. We expect a shootout. That's because Baylor puts up basically the same types of numbers that Oklahoma State puts yeah, up. I mean, that's what makes this game so much fun, Bob. As you look at the stats, I mean, Baylor is almost identical to Oklahoma State. On offense, they're a fast-paced, up-tempo up style as well. They have two superstars and Robert Griffin and Kendall Wright. On defense, actually, Baylor's a little bit better. The biggest difference, though, you see it at the end, 73 in turnover margin. That's why Baylor is 4-2 and two and why Oklahoma State is 7-0. and oh. It's all about turnovers. Let's go back down to Janine. Coach Bryles, you told us that you may need to be somewhat unconventional to get the win here today. What do you mean by that? 
Well, when you're playing a team that's as potent as they are offensively, sometimes you need to be a little more risky on your side of the ball when you're on offense. So there could be a situation where we might be uh, not as conventional in fourth down situations, but you never know. We'll wait and see how the game goes. You have a prolific offense, yet you spent a good part of your bye week, you told us, working in the red zone. What were you hoping to accomplish? Well, we just when you get down there, you got to score touchdowns because the league's so strong and there's so many points being scored. You better come away with seven. That's what we worked on. Have a good game, Coach. Thank you very much. We're just about set for game time, and we will see two lethal quarterback to wide receiver combinations when we come back and kick it off in Stillwater. Oklahoma State won the toss, and they deferred their option to the second half. So Robert Griffin will start with the football first. Bob Shoes and Bob Davey and Janine Edwards here at Boone Pickens Stadium. What a scene, homecoming, and they put on about as good a homecoming show here in Stillwater as any place in America and Quinn Sharp will send it deep to Antoine Goodley. We expect a shootout this afternoon and a line drive kick could give some field position to Baylor. Levi Norwood off the hop instead. He's all the way out to about the 31 yard line before he stood up. Joe Mitchell made the stop on special teams for Oklahoma State. So it's RG3 number one in the country in completion percentage. Not a bad touchdown to interception ratio as well when you're talking about 22 to 2. Two great quarterbacks in this game. I think the difference Robert Griffin throws the ball down the field a lot more than Brandon Wheaton. And that's why it's important for Baylor to get this run game going so they can set up play action because nobody does it better than Robert Griffin. Kendall Wright is at the bottom of your picture closest in the trips to the near side but they'll start on the ground with Terrence Ganaway. He picks up about six yards on first down, so second down and four upcoming for Baylor. Baylor's been inconsistent running the ball. They've run it really well at times, but in their losses at Kansas State and AM, they've not been very productive running. And Mark Gannaway down at the 35, so it's second and five, and here's Griffin's first attempt. Then he finds a slant to Kendall Wright. He breaks a tackle, and he's got a first down. In plus territory, so already the combination of Griffin and Kendall Wright moves the chains. Get a taste already of how fast paced this is going to be and how explosive these skill players are in this game. A little bubble screen. They get it back in the hands of Wright. And Wright's down the sideline, close to another first down. Coach, we could end up seeing a 160 <laughs> to 170 play game, right? Yeah, I'll tell you the other thing. We might turn this right away. You heard the Red River rivalry. This may be the bubble bonanza. You may see more <laughs> bubble screens in this game from both teams. The officials had not put the ball ready for play yet, and Baylor was ready to go. I tell you, these officials. There is no snap. Please reset the play clock to 25 seconds. Play clock and a game clock will start on my signal. You're an official in the Big 12. You better stay hydrated. Because you're out for you, you, you got a full day's work ahead of you just getting that ball spot. Because both these teams want to get up there and go. The officials in this game could conceivably run the New York City Marathon <laughs> next week. They are that well conditioned. Play clock down to ten. Second down and two. the middle a first down carry for Ganaway as we take a look at today's Baylor impact players brought to you by Chick-fil-a well we said it's important for Baylor to run that ball and be balanced I think we've seen it already what that does with play action Terrence Ganaway just been inconsistent totally capable Kendall Wright as explosive a guy as there is in the slot and on defense Jamie Blatnick for OSU the defensive end there's your bubble screen this time it's Terrence Williams and he picks up five the second down and five and already Baylor on a march to start the game. Daytuan Lowe came up and made the stop. Griffin will keep it. And he is upended at about the 32 yard line. Markel Martin who has had an inconsistent year for the Cowboys. Turned Griffin away a loss of a couple. It'll be third down at about six. And you have to wonder right now, is this four down territory for our Browns? Conceivably could run the ball right here or throw a bubble screen, knowing that he's going to go for it on fourth down. Here 
comes a blitz off the edge on third down and six. Griffin to the sideline. Broke it up. Great anticipation by Justin Gilbert. The sophomores had a terrific year at corner, and now decision time for Art Riles on fourth and six in that gray area inside the plus 35-yard line, and he will leave his offense on the field. That's why I'm surprised by that call. I, I really felt that was a great situation, Bob, maybe for a draw, maybe a bubble screen, because you knew he was going to go for it on fourth down anyway. Already some drama on the first drive of the game. Baylor goes empty on fourth down and six. Now they force Oklahoma State to get lined up quickly to the empty formation. Now the coaches see exactly how Oklahoma State's lined up. Play clock at two. Play clock winding down, and Griffin has to call timeout. We'll step aside and see if Baylor sticks with the plan to go for it on fourth down in a moment. Back in Stillwater. Fourth down and six after the timeout for Baylor. And the Bears offense is still on the field. And Coach Davey, we might see this decision made a lot today by both of these coaches. Yeah, Janine talked to Art Browse about unconventional style it takes probably to match Oklahoma State's scoring potential. You're seeing it right here, going forward on fourth and seven. Eighth play of the drive, fourth and six. Griffin under pressure, throws off his back foot, climbing the ladder to make the catch is Kendall Wright. And he's got a first down. What a throw by Griffin with Rashetti Jones right in his face. Great point. I mean, he was not stationary. He was on the move in the pocket and delivered that on a rope for a first down. Griffin to the sideline. Somehow losing his footing trying to come back for the football was Kendall Wright. So it will be second down and 10. I think people that haven't watched Robert Griffin as much as we have, will be surprised just how polished he is as a passer. He has tremendous arm strength, plus a very good feel in the pocket and touch. I mean, he is a drop back passer. Blitz comes on second down. Bubble screen to the near side to Lanier Sampson. Inside the 15, pop down at about the 14 yard line as we take a look at Coach Davies' focus points. Well, the first one's perfect. Because here we are in the red zone, they have to have touchdowns, not field goals. They spent their whole open date scrimmaging offense and defense in red zone. Second thing, defense off the field on third down, and they have to steal a possession. They kind of did right there in some ways by converting on fourth down. That catch by Sampson was good for a first down, so the 11th play of the drive at the 14-yard line. Right motions into the backfield. They run the option, and it's Griffin on the keeper. RG3 spins to the five yard line, a gain of nine. Hooper Bassett made the stop, second and one from the five. So, you want to be a defensive coordinator in the Big 12, huh? No. <laughs> I have no desire to be a defensive coordinator in the Big 12. Yeah. Not when these are the offenses you have to try and stop. Think about all we've seen. That was the option. You take a look at Bill Young, who's been everywhere in college football. But just think of all the things we've seen, Bob, and that's with a quarterback there that probably runs 4-3. So you sprinkle a little option in. Straight handoff up the middle, and Ganaway has a first down to the two-yard line. So it's first and goal from the two for Baylor. And this is what they worked on right here. The open date, they scrimmaged. They put the ball at the nine-yard line every day, scrimmaged offense against defense. Again, it's Ganaway. And he might have gotten just inside the two. Sean Lewis, the Big 12 co-defensive freshman of the year last year. Knife through to help bring down Terrence Ganaway. It'll be second down and goal. I think right here is an interesting call for Art Browse because you worked on toughness in the red zone, running the ball in the red zone. He doesn't really want a play action pass right here. He'd like to muscle it in because that was his emphasis during the open date. They run the option, the pitch to Ganaway, fumbles the football, picks it back up, and is knocked out at the one by Caleb Levy. Now it'll be third down and goal on what was nearly a turnover. One thing I mentioned about Robert Griffin, we had him against Kansas State. He goes down a lot of times like he's shot. He takes a good hit right here. He does a good job though of giving ground a little bit, so there's not great impact right there. Alex Elkins delivered the blow on Griffin. 15th play of the drive. Ganaway. 
I don't think he got there. Inside the one. Again, it was Elkins that brought him down. Now it's fourth down and goal from inside the one. Well, he's going to go for it. Because we said they need touchdowns, not field goals. He worked on this the whole open date, being physical. I don't think he has much choice but to go for it right here. Well, you don't have to wait for the last game of the season. Oklahoma State, Oklahoma for Bedlam. We've got it right now on fourth down and goal at the one-yard line, and it looks like Gar Bryles. Will he call another timeout? They're going to let it roll. And now a timeout is called before the snap. The crowd reacting, they think they got the goal line stand. So do the Oklahoma State defensive players. But a timeout was called before the snap. I think there's some energy in the stadium right now. The play. Baylor called timeout. That's their second charge of the first half. Timeout on the field. The crowd doesn't like it, but there's no question that the timeout was granted by the officials before the snap as we step aside for a moment. ABC brought to you by K Jewelers, the number one jewelry store in America. Every kiss begins with K. The 2012 Ford F-150 with available EcoBoots. Visit Ford.com slash big score to learn more. And Allstate. Shop less, get more. Make one call to an Allstate agent. They put on a show, homecoming here in Stillwater. And already Baylor has put on a show on this opening drive. Down to fourth down and goal at the one yard line. The 16th play of the drive and two timeouts spent by Art Bryles on this opening possession as well. I know Art Bryles would really love to run this ball here because he sold his team during the open date. We need to be more physical and be able to run the ball in the red zone. That was a point of emphasis, but I wouldn't be surprised to see a little pop pass or something. Ganaway. Stop before the goal line. He's going to send a message. Line up in a condensed formation and just hand the big tailback again. Sean Lewis unaccounted for off the edge. Wow, that's twice in that red zone scenario. The backside linebacker, Sean Lewis, came unaccounted for. A 16 play drive, 69 yards down to the half yard line, and no points for Baylor. Oklahoma State now takes over for the first time, and Brandon Wheaton will not be shot to throw it from the end zone. On first down, pitch and catch to Justin Blackman. And Blackman stiff arms a man. Lost the football. Ruled down by contact. Good enough for an Oklahoma State first down, a gain of 13. You mentioned the yards on that drive for Baylor. Yards don't mean anything in this game. It's about points. It's about red zone. It's about turnovers. There's going to be a lot of yardage. Baylor was not able to take advantage of that drive. Trap a handoff to Jeremy Smith. And Smith's out across the 25. He's got another Oklahoma State first down. So two snaps. And already Brandon Wheaton has his offense working. One of the best I've seen. I really enjoyed watching him yesterday on tape. Very mature, very quick release. Total command of this offense. Understands it as well as the coaches. Wheaton goes far side. That ball batted around and almost intercepted. Joe Williams was there to knock it away from Isaiah Anderson. Anderson is a junior, normally somewhere in the fourth to fifth range on the depth chart, but with Hubert Anyum knocked out for the rest of the year with a broken foot, Anderson and Michael Harrison, a sophomore, will see a lot more snaps with this Oklahoma State offense. See Oklahoma State in two backs. They'll give you a lot more formations than a lot of spread teams do. Draw play to Randall. Nice job to move the pile. 
A gain of six, third down and four upcoming as we take a look at today's Oklahoma State impact players brought to you by Chick-fil-A. Yeah, Oklahoma State wants to run it, but I think their two impact players are two receivers. Justin Blackman, he's the outside receiver. Josh Cooper is the inside receiver in the slot. Four-man rush on third down. Whedon to the sideline. Blackman's got a first down. Yeah, Josh is the inside slot receiver. Really unnatural. Gets his hands on a lot of catches. Good run after the catch. On defense for Baylor, Ahmad Dixon is the nickelback. Kind of a combination linebacker, defensive back. Probably their biggest playmaker. Randall has another lane. Shakes and bakes his way into plus territory for nine more. Nice block by the fullback, Kyle Staley, to free up Joseph Randall. Talked about focus points for Baylor. Number one, getting off the field on third down defense. They had their chance on third down, didn't get off the field. The same problem they had, Bob, in College Station against Texas A&M two weeks ago. Have to get off the field on third down. Play action for Whedon. He goes down the seam for Blackman. Incomplete. Good coverage by K.J. Morton. That was great coverage by K.J. Morton because that was a perfectly thrown ball to a big, strong 220-pound receiver. He gets a little bit of that jersey now. <laughs> that left hand of K.J. Morton had a little bit of that orange jersey, but good coverage down the field. Third down and one. A little hitch to Cooper. He's got a first down. That's basically a running play. When you think about the way these two offenses operate, that's like going off tackle left in the Big Ten. It really is. You know, the college rules where you can block down the field as long as the ball's thrown behind. In essence, they are running plays. We're going to run a lot of those today. Thing we noticed watching tape yesterday, nobody gets that bubble screen out faster than Brand Wheat. His release is incredible, how quickly he gets that ball out there to those receivers. Whedon has to call timeout. So we'll step aside. Oklahoma State, their opening possession, and they're in plus territory in a scoreless game. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC. The Coach's Trophy presented by Dr. Pepper, and that will go to the winner of the BCS championship game. At the end of this season. And the folks here in Stillwater think it's going to make a return trip. Yeah, it's so hard to put yourself in the position Oklahoma State's put themselves in by controlling your own destiny. Man, you love to take advantage because you don't get many opportunities like Oklahoma State has. Whedon finds Anderson. About two yards shy of a first down. It'll be second down and two. KJ Morton was there to make the stop just so hard to get any pressure on Oklahoma State. Schematically, they spread you out. Reading with that quick release, just frustrating to try to pressure when you just can't get there. Blackman wide open. Another first down as Blackman stiff arms his way to about the 20-yard line. For Baylor, you have to really be mentally tough. I mean, Oklahoma State is going to move the ball. They're going to make plays. Just stay in the game mentally because all you need is one play. It's all about forcing turnovers, holding Oklahoma State to a field goal right now in the red zone. Again, Blackman on a comeback. He's down to about the six-yard line as we check in with Robert Flores. All right, Bob, Taco Bell studio update. Of course, at the end of the season, it's Bedlam, Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. Here the Sooners lead K-State 7-0. Blake Bell, not Landry Jones, scores from in close. That game on ESPN. And Texas A&M led by double figures again at the half, and they fall in overtime, 38-31 to Missouri. Wow. All right, Robert, thanks very much. This conference... We've got an injured Baylor Bear, and that's Gary Mason. Six tackles for loss so far this season. He leads Baylor in that category, and he's an impact pass rushing defensive end that they can ill afford to lose. So Tevin Elliott 
who led Baylor in sacks last season, will take the place of Mason for the time being as we take a look at some of Coach Davies' focus points for this afternoon for Oklahoma State. Obviously, they've been so good on offense. I think they may be the best offense in the country right now with their tempo, their balance, they're playing with so much confidence. Just keep doing it on defense. The reason you're 7-0 is you have forced turnovers. And on defense, and as a team, I think, for Oklahoma State, expect the unexpected. You know Art Browse has a lot of tricks. You've heard him say already he has to be unconventional. Expect the unexpected. 12th play of a drive that for Oklahoma State began inside their own one yard line. First and goal at the six. Trap hand off to Jeremy Smith. Lost the football, but down by contact at the five. This is where your Baylor and defenses, particularly in the Big 12, all these spread offenses, when you get inside the red zone, that field constricts. It's much easier to play defense down in this red zone hold them to a field goal that is the goal and that would be a major victory right here for this Baylor defense second and goal at the five five man rush here comes the blitz we to the goal line incomplete Bob, why it's so much easier to play defense in this constricted area, as you know, you don't have to worry about depth. You don't have to worry about the receivers running by you. So you play much tighter coverage. So great opportunity. We talked about focus points, third down for Baylor. Here's another chance right here. Third and goal. Here comes the blitz again. Whedon under some pressure. Back of the end zone. Almost a one-handed grab and a flag down. Blackman draws the penalty. It looks like K.J. Morton will be flagged in the end zone. And this will give a fresh set of downs inside the five to Oklahoma State. Pass interference on a defense number eight. Foul happened in the end zone. Ball be placed at the two-yard line. First down. Yeah, just straight man-to-man -man coverage on the outside with K.J. Morton and Justin Blackman. He was behind him just a little bit. And that's another third down conversion in essence for Oklahoma State on this drive. Randall walks into the end zone with a touchdown. His 13th rushing touchdown of the year. Ninety-nine and a half yard drive. <laughs> Opening drive of the game. Impressive. Impressive. Quinn Sharp makes it 7-0. Baylor fans, for a moment, thought they might have gotten a third down stop. Yeah, we have a good look at this penalty on third down on K.J. Morton. Yeah, good call. Grabbed the right arm of Blackman, and Randall was able to plow his way in the end zone for the touchdown. Oklahoma State with the early seven-point lead. Frightening start for Baylor as they get down inside the one yard line of Oklahoma State come away empty stopped on fourth and goal thought they had a third down stop at the opposite end but KJ Morton called for pass interference against Justin Blackman in the end zone and Joseph Randall who came into today in the top six in America in total touchdowns scored now has 14 on the year he had four total touchdowns in the win over Missouri last week and Oklahoma State has the seven nothing lead. See the question all day for Baylor is going to be, do they have somebody on defense that can make a play against this offense? And can Griffin now answer? Levi Norwood, a couple of yards deep will bring it out. Doesn't even make it to the 15-yard line, and the ball pops out. Oklahoma State thinks they have it, and they do. A turnover on special teams in the red zone for Baylor. Did we mention turnover margin in the open being a major part of Oklahoma State's success? Andre May comes out of the pile with the football. 
I'm sure every Baylor at home, Bay Baylor fan at home is hoping for down by contact. The ball's no, out. It's out. These officials do a tremendous job, don't they? We've had two replays, one on a pass interference, one on a fumble. And they made the exact right calls. So the number one plus minus team in America already with a takeaway on special teams. Here's Randall, flags down. Randall into the end zone again. Flag back at the line of scrimmage. Illegal shift on the offense, number 80. Five yard penalty, first down. Phil Bennett told us he felt like Baylor got stunned down in College Station against Texas A&M a couple weeks ago. Just from A&M's overall talent level on offense, it's one of the best defensive coaches in the country right here, Phil Bennett. I mean, a total rebuilding job at Baylor defensively. Big break right there. First and 15 after the penalty. We up a play action fake. Wide open in the right flat, Ty Staley. He walks into the end zone with an Oklahoma State touchdown. Dejected. Art Riles. Do they take advantage of turnovers? That's what they've done all year. That's been the formula for Oklahoma State. First touchdown of the season for Kai Staley. And that is 14 points in 18 seconds. I'll for the show Cowboys. you what play action does. Watch this linebacker right here. He's going to get action right at him. Look at him step up on the fullback. The fullback runs right by him to the flat. That is very difficult, Bob. A linebacker has to play run. The fullback slips by him for a touchdown. So 14-0, Oklahoma State with the lead over Baylor. Number three looking pretty good, and we've got two more games tonight involving top six teams in the BCS. Tough road tests. Our ABC coverage begins at 8 Eastern. Clemson at Georgia Tech, and of course Stanford at USC taking on the Trojans at the Coliseum. Do you think Ohio State will look very similar to these two offenses? Last time we had Ohio State two weeks ago, the last time they played, they completed one pass in the entire game. Is this the polar opposite right here to what we will see tonight out of Ohio State? The fans in Stillwater get a little upset with this offense if they don't complete one pass in a set of three downs. And Norwood, who fumbled it a moment ago, watches that ball sail out of the back of the end zone. Quinn Sharp, number one in the country, most touchbacks. That's his 35th on the year. And let's go down and check in with Janine. Well, Bob, what started out as a very positive vibe after their opening series for the Baylor offense quickly turned dejected when they saw that turnover there and they've seen the Cowboys score. Now, I can tell you that there was no frustration when they came off the field the first time around, although a couple of the offensive linemen were complaining. They were trying to speed it up too much. They actually were not 100% ready when the play was called. So coaches are telling them, guys, be ready because these Cowboys are reacting quickly. We'll keep our eyes on those offensive linemen and see how well they deal with the up-tempo that Art Bryles wants to play. Griffin, play action fake. He goes downfield. A jump ball, and it falls through the hands of Kendall Wright, incomplete. Justin Gilbert was in position, but somehow the ball found its way through to Wright, and we've got a flag down. The pass on the defense, number 37. Contact to the quarterback's helmet. 15-yard penalty. First down. That's Alex Elkins called for the personal foul. We're going to get a chance to see just the hit here at the end. <laughs> I guess it was that last push. But 
That's not fine China back there at quarterback, right? I mean, I didn't see. I did. What'd you think? The officials called it contact to the quarterback's helmet. I didn't see any of that. I think they'd have to dust Robert Griffin's helmet for fingerprints to prove <laughs> that there was contact to his helmet. That that was a questionable call at best. Draw play. Ganaway with room. He's got eight yards on first down. Second down and two at Baylor's own 43. Daytuan Lowe tripped up Terrence Ganaway. Yeah, this Baylor offense only 34 yards rushing at AM, only 38 yards rushing at Kansas State. That's their two losses. Really try to be balanced. Kendall Wright has a first down. Nice move in the open field and into plus territory. And it's now some more pushing and shoving downfield as Justin Gilbert got tied up with Lanier Sampson, I believe. Check that Terrence Williams and Kendall Wright heads over to the sideline. And as you mentioned, that's just a run. Get the ball out there in space and let your playmaker make plays. Here you see Baylor with three receivers into the short side of the field. One-on-one -on -one coverage out here to the wide side of the field on the wide receiver. Wide open. And with a first down, Levi Norwood. Out of bounds inside the Oklahoma State 35 yard line. We talked about how similar these teams are schematically, Bob, really on both sides of the football. Offense is almost identical. Baylor maybe throws it down the field a little bit more, but just very similar. Kendall Wright back on the field. He's in the slot right. Griffin instead looks left. He's got a wide open comeback to Lanier Sampson. Sampson breaks a tackle, takes a pop out of bounds at the 24, very close to another Baylor first down. And we've got an injured cowboy down on the near sideline. Sean Lewis shaking up on that play for Oklahoma State as we take a look at some focus points for Baylor. We talked about touchdowns in the red zone. They're 0 for 1 on that. They had an opportunity. Defense off the field on third down. I think they had three third down opportunities on Oklahoma State's first touchdown drive and then steal a possession. Actually, Oklahoma State has stole a possession from, the, from them early in this game. Sean Lewis, the fourth leading tackler for Oklahoma State. Looks like his ankle was twisted up, so James Thomas, a very able bodied senior, will back him up. Thomas has three interceptions this season, puts him in the top four in the Big 12. He's an impact player, only 13 starts in the career of James Thomas. He's got four interceptions, four fumble recoveries, and three forced fumbles. So that's the kind of player that this Oklahoma State defense produces. They knock the ball out, and it's something that has been emblematic, I guess, Coach, of, of what Bill Young's defensive system has produced here in Stillwater. I mean, they've gotten better every year. That's been a trademark of Bill Young's defense. In 09, 30 turnovers and 10, 34 turnovers. They're on pace for 45 turnovers this year bunch formation this time for Baylor Griffin on a keeper can't escape the rush Cooper Bassett drags him down for a loss of about four as we go back to Robert Flores all right Bob West Virginia headed to the Big 12 they jump on top on Rutgers a team that they have beaten 16 consecutive times. Sean Alston, long run here. West Virginia leading Rutgers in the snow in New Jersey, 7-3. It's All back right. in your home area, back in that New York area with that snow on the ground. Griffin under pressure. Hit, can't release the football. Thomas comes on a linebacker blitz and gets the sack. Third down and a mile coming up now for Baylor. 
going to watch Thomas. He lines up on the wrong side of the field, ends up on where he was supposed to be aligned, and Baylor couldn't account for him. Sometimes confusion confuses the offense as well. That was a great example right there. Four down territory, though, for Baylor right here. Just trying to get it back to somewhat of a manageable fourth down. Griffin flicks it right, underthrown and broken up. Justin Gilbert jumped in front of Terrence Williams. Now it's fourth down and 17. And this might be prohibitive. I don't know if can you go for it on fourth and 17. I, even to, if... though. I don't know what the choice is. I guess you're going to try to maybe punt it. They haven't had a field goal in four games. So really the risk of getting a field goal block might be greater than. Well, they're bringing back Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones is the place kicker. So far this season, he is three for six. He has missed three field goal attempts over the last four games. And they're going to try one from 48 yards. You always have to worry about blocked field goals on these liners. No chance. Again, Baylor comes away empty. Boys take over again. Pretty good field position at their own 31 yard line. They went 99 yards for a touchdown on their opening possession. Whedon to Blackman. A gain of seven on first down. Joe Williams brought down Blackman. And that's just a simple pitch and catch. I don't know. Can you keep on giving that kind of a cushion to Justin Blackman? That's the dilemma. I mean, that's your first response, but you don't have many options. You know, you get up there and play straight man to man. There's obviously a risk with that. You see Baylor in a man to man defense here. They bring a five man rush and Whedon very well protected down the sideline. Leaping attempt almost hauled in by Josh Stewart. Ahmad Dixon was out in coverage on Stewart. And Gary Mason, by the way, is back in the game. The pass rushing end. For Baylor, so a bit of good news for the Bears, and it's third down and a short four. This is key. This third down right here. Be interesting if I think I think uh, Phil Bennett's going to heat them up a little bit. Here they come, straight man-to-man -man coverage. Draw play. Randall breaks free. Joseph Randall, no deep safeties, and Baylor pays for it. Touchdown. See the dilemma. You either spread out with them and die the slow death, or sometimes you get up there in pressure and die the fast breath, die the fast death. Well, there's a reason that they call it a zero blitz, right? Because if you don't get there, and if all of a sudden the draw play finds a crease, there are zero defenders in the middle of the field, and Baylor had no one to stop Joseph Randall. 62 yard touchdown run. And it's a three-score lead for Oklahoma State. As you know, when you blitz seven, you have four defensive backs spread out playing man-to-man. -man. There's nobody left. That's just a straight-line touchdown once you break the line of scrimmage. Fourteen rushing touchdowns on the season now for Joseph Randall. Twenty-one to nothing. Oklahoma State is on top of Baylor. Mike Gundy's team doing what Mike Gundy's teams do, and that is capitalize on turnovers, spread out a defense, and get some chunk plays. Levi Norwood again, this time from about the seven. Tries to turn the corner. That time actually Darius Jones on the return, and he's all the way out across the 35-yard line. So pretty good field position for Baylor, but now they have to have a score. Yeah, and Obviously, the game plan's still the same for our Browse as it was when it was 0-0. They, they can move the ball. It still comes down to the things we have talked about. Red zone scoring, turnovers, and try to get a stop on defense. It's kind of fun to coach defense if you're Bill Youngblood. 
you get that cushion, you get a 21 cushion in the first 21 point cushion in the first quarter. That takes a lot of pressure off your defense. Griffin finds Sampson. And Sampson very close to a first down out to the 42 yard line. And that will move the chains for Baylor. Sean Lewis is back in the game, by the way, for Oklahoma State. Griffin backpedaling gets it to the sideline. That's another first down. Terrence Williams came back to help his quarterback with David L. Collins pressuring RG3. The arm strength of Robert Griffin was exhibited right there. He was on a dash out of the pocket, didn't have his feet planted at all, and delivered that ball. I mean, this kid's an NFL quarterback. I don't think there's any question about that. Play action. Griffin, looking downfield, wanted to take a shot, now extends the play. And he will scramble out of bounds and pick up about seven yards. And that will take us to the end of the first quarter. The game turned early in favor of Oklahoma State. Joseph Randall up the middle. That was the first touchdown. Then a fumble on the kickoff sets up an easy touchdown for Kai Staley. It was 14-0 Oklahoma State, and they have added another. hoping on something to cheer about on this drive there has not been much that has gone Baylor's way so far 21 nothing number three leading the Bears Oklahoma State capitalizing off a special teams turnover and a goal line stand the opening possession of the game Baylor drives it 16 plays all the way down inside the one yard line and they get shut down on fourth and goal second down and four though as we open up the second quarter Griffin to the sideline rarely do you see an inaccurate throw from Robert Griffin that time he had Sampson but air mailed him now it's third down and four it sets up a, another third down third downs key Oklahoma State three for three on third downs Baylor 0 for three on third downs again to me this is four down territory pretty good situation to run the draw right here to Ganaway. Instead of bubble screen. And that goes backwards. Tevin Reese might have lost a yard. Now it's fourth down and at least four. A flag, though, on the near side of the field. Another personal foul. Daytuan Lowe called for roughing the passer. Well, the first time Griffin was hit by Alex Elkins, it was at least questionable. So rather than having to go forward on fourth down and medium, it's a free first down for Baylor. First third down conversion of the day. By penalty right there. But that was a another, that was a big third down conversion. And away, breaks a tackle. Down to about the 23 yard line, a gain of three on first down. Again, always a guy at 200 yards against Iowa State. He had 120 yards against TCU. Now, the game's 21 0. I still think it's critical, Baylor, to keep that balance. Second and seven, Griffin pulls it back. And it looks to be good enough for another Baylor first down to the 15-yard line. It is first and 10 for the Bears at the plus 15. You don't see a lot of predetermined or quarterback read runs out of Baylor. Surprising, but they don't use him a lot as a predetermined runner. They might just want to keep him healthy. Yeah, exactly. Empty backfield. Ganaway motions into the slot left. Quarterback draw. Griffin, maybe a yard. Tyler Johnson made the stop. 
This feels like a must drive for Baylor, doesn't it? And not just a must drive to score points, a must drive to score seven. Yeah, I don't think there's any question about that. But we knew going in, honestly, every possession for Baylor was a must score possession. I mean, you can see the flow of this game. Baylor's going to have really problems stopping Oklahoma State. So their offense came into this game with that kind of pressure on them. Second down and nine, just inside the 15. Play clock down to seven. Plenty of time for Griffin. On the option, he keeps it. Just lost his footing at the 10. It'll be third down and five. Ryan Robinson might have been the last line of defense for Oklahoma State between Griffin and the end zone. And again, what you have to think is four down territory. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Third and five at the tip. They'll run the option with Kendall Wright. Griffin on the keeper, and he's got a first down. First and goal for the Bears inside the five. Start out in empty, no back formation. <laughs> Trips into the boundary, and then run the option to the field. Whatever they're paying these defensive coordinators in this conference, they're not paying them enough to try to defend all this. <laughs> Sounds kind of like a bitter old defensive coordinator to me. Yeah, I kind of like those two backs in the backfield. Griffin to the goal line, knocked away. Intended for right. Great job by Markel Martin to jump in front of Kendall Wright. Second down and goal. Interesting, though, isn't it? It's first and goal on the four. Art Browse worked the whole open date on putting the ball on the nine-yard line. Offense, defense being physical. That probably seems like three weeks ago we worked on that. It's back to spread them out and score however we can score now. This guy does a great job. One of the most innovative play callers. A lot like Gus Malzahn of Auburn. You know, two guys that came out of high school coaching. Also, Chad Morris at Clemson. They might have Not to call time out again. Down to three on the play clock. They get it off. Yeah. Danaway, well, that time they try to play power football. Now it's third and goal from the four. Again, Alex Elkins was the first man there for Oklahoma State. It was a late personnel change for Baylor, and they looked a little discombobulated when they came up to the line, unless that was by design to try and make Oklahoma State think that they were going to be late to the line. But now back in the game is Kendall Wright. He'll be in the slot right on third and goal from just inside the five. 13th play of this drive for Baylor. Play action. Back of the end zone. Intercepted. Picked up by Justin Gilbert. And Gilbert brings it out. Oklahoma State does it again. Their 16th interception of the season. Number one in the country. They may just take this formula all the way to the national championship game. Well, you're going to see a great play action fake. Robert Griffin went to Kendall Wright as money man and Gilbert with his third pick of the season. Taylor comes away empty again. Welcome back to Stillwater as we check our Pacific Life game summary and this is already a game about an opportunistic Oklahoma State team and Baylor coach Davey missing opportunities. Yeah and the formula that Oklahoma State's won with all year turnover margin two turnovers created by the Oklahoma State one by special teams one by the defense. Only the third interception of the season thrown by Robert Griffin but it comes in the end zone. And Gilbert brings it back out across the 25. So Whedon goes back to work. Underneath, finds Jeremy Smith, but that's incomplete. Knocked away by Ahmad Dixon. Let's go back to Robert. All right, Bob, beautiful conditions there in Stillwater. Look at the snow in New Jersey for West Virginia and Rutgers. It hasn't affected the offenses so far. Gary Nova to Mark Harrison, 45 yards, got it. Rutgers up 17-14. And look at Oklahoma, now only up four on Kansas State. All right, Robert, another screen attempt to Jeremy Smith. Another 
pop by Ahmad Dixon. And now it's third down and 10 for Oklahoma State. As my wife, I talked to a little while ago, just delighted with the weather, about 20 minutes away from our house there in well, East Brunswick. You have five children under the age of what? Ten. Ten. Yeah, there's yeah. nothing like being stuck yeah. in a snowstorm with five How kids. How about just your under. wife getting those five kids dressed to get them <laughs> outside the door? You're stealing being here in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Right now. Third and ten for Whedon. All kinds of time. Looks for the home run into double coverage incomplete. That is a huge series of downs for that Baylor defense. You are exactly right. I mean, give Baylor's defense a lot of credit. I mean, they could have caved in right there. They get the ball back almost immediately for their offense. Baylor's offense has 14 first downs in a little over a quarter and no points. Twice they've been inside the five yard line and come away with nothing. But they're about to get the ball back. Levi Norwood deep to receive the punt from Quinn Sharp. Norwood returnable from the 25 makes the first man miss and gets to the 28 yard line as we take a look at today's Aflac trivia question. Brandon Wheaton's career passing yards, third in Oklahoma State history. Who's number two? We will answer that question shortly here in Stillwater. ESPN's College Football on ABC, brought to you by Lexus. It's time to engineer amazing. Verizon 4G LTE, America's fastest, most reliable 4G network. And Aflac, official partner of the Heisman Trophy. It's a tremendous homecoming celebration here in Stillwater, known as the walk around. Wreath decorations everywhere. More than 75,000 alumni and friends enjoyed the display. Six square blocks in the heart of OSU's campus. And many are at the game today enjoying Mike Gundy and Brandon Whedon building a three touchdown lead, but now a little life for Baylor. They might be down 21 to nothing, but they have not struggled to move the football. They've been inside the five yard line twice. No points. Robert Griffin throwing only his third interception of the season on the last possession. Back to the offense and back it goes to Kendall Wright. Wright about eight and a half yards on first down. So it'll be second down and short, popped by Joe Mitchell and James Thomas. Baylor picking the tempo up here a little bit, going a little bit faster pace. Ganaway can't pick up the first down, about a yard shy. Ryan Robinson was able to snuff out Terrence Ganaway, so now it's third down and a yard. Very important play for Baylor here. You wonder if they would go for it inside their own 40 yard line. Yeah, Hunt Browse doesn't want to make that decision. He wants, to, he wants to make this first down right here. It looks on the quarterback sneak like Robert Griffin got it. And he did. You know, I think for Baylor, Bob, we know they have a good offense. We know they have a good quarterback. Can he became, become a team that can compete against the elite teams? You know, they started out hot last year, started out hot this year. Play action for Griffin. Steps up. On court's a deep one. And it is dropped right in the hands of Tevin Reese for what would have been about a 35 yard gain. And Reese dropped the ball. But just back to my point, I mean, these kind of games get you noticed. These kind of games put you on the map. Baylor has been unable to do it in these kind of games. And everybody knows they scare you to death. Everybody knows they're flashy, but they've had a hard time winning the big games. Another drop. That one's right in the hands of Lanier Sampson. Robert Griffin is number one in the country in completion percentage. And he'd have an even higher completion percentage if his wide receivers could hold on to the football. Third down and ten. It's fun to coach defense when it's third and ten and you're up 21 nothing in the second quarter. Let's see if Bill Young, he's in man-to-man -man coverage here. Now and they, they sprint back. Out. Yeah. I mean, there are two wide open receivers out here in the slot. Griffin, tipped ball, incomplete. So Baylor does what they can't afford to do in a game like this, especially down 21 to nothing, dropping yeah. what are wide open first down opportunities, and now they'll have to punt. Yeah, zero execution. That wasn't so much what Oklahoma State did, it's what Baylor didn't do. 
Justin Blackman. Strong punt returning. A fake and a completion. Gerard Monk, the tight end, slips up the middle and a perfectly executed fake punt breathes a little more life back into the Bears, a gain of 21. Talked about expect the unexpected. You're going to see, I think, right here, the left, yeah, 20, sneaks out of there. Expect the unexpected. But how do you prepare for that? Bill Young said they made a gimmick play tape. I doubt that one was on there. That probably goes back to Art Browser when it was at Stephenville High School. It was probably the last time he called that when he pulled that one out of the bag of tricks. Looked like linebacker Brody Trahan threw the pass to Gerard Monk. So right back on the field is Griffin. Play action. Over the middle. Wide open is right. He drops the ball. He might have heard some footsteps as Daytuan Lowe was closing in on Kendall Wright, but that the third drop in the last four passing plays for Baylor. He left his helmet out there. Ganaway breaks a tackle. And looks to be good for a first down. Very, very close. Might be a half yard shy. We'll have to see where they spot the football. Third and short upcoming, it looks like, for Baylor. Art Browse. Does he have more tricks than gimmicks? He and Gus Malls on the two guys in college football that have the most. Trying to move the pile is Glasgow Martin. I don't think he got there. It's going to be fourth down and a half yard. Caleb Levy made the stop shy of the line to make so no doubt about it four down territory for Baylor and a fourth and one they'll go for it again Griffin will try and sneak for it second effort might have gotten into the sticks we'll have to see where they put the football down probably not it didn't work at the goal line and it looks like it may not have worked here Nigel Nicholas made the first hit on Robert Griffin. Well, normally our first down line is pretty accurate. And if our first down line is as accurate as we think, there's no chance that Griffin just picked up a first down. away empty for Baylor. Baylor spent a whole week red zone short yardage. So far it's not paying off. Just great penetration right there. Caleb Levy the linebacker. Welcome back to Stillwater. As the last play, the quarterback sneak on fourth down by Robert Griffin is under video review as both coaches await the official's decision. The second effort by Griffin might have gotten him about a foot, but he needed a yard. It's Levy, the middle linebacker, just stepping After up. After review on the last play, the call on the field stands short of the first down. So the frustration continues for Baylor offensively. Five offensive possessions, 191 yards of total offense. They have yet to punt, and they also have yet to score. Two drives, stall inside the five-yard line, one right at the goal line. Still no points. Draw play to Randall. Right up the middle he goes again. First down for Oklahoma State, not across their own 45-yard line. 14 yard game. Total yards mean nothing. Time of possession means nothing in a game like this. You just look at those statistics. I mean, that verifies that. And Baylor with 48 plays, 191 yards, and zero points. That sounds almost impossible to run 48 plays in the first half and not have a point. We're not even to the midway point of the second quarter thing you have to watch here if you're Baylor Oklahoma State 
against Missouri last week came out and pounded them once they got the ball once they got ahead in the game in the running game quick flip to Josh Stewart it'll be third down and five from midfield so a chance for Baylor to get off the field on defense as we check in with Janine well Bob you guys have seen the drops by Baylor today but none so far for the Cowboys and you know they had 12 drops in their last two games so what did they work on this week well they went back to basics they went to the jugs machine catching ton of tennis balls staying long after practice Justin Blackman said maybe it was sloppiness I don't know but we worked on eye discipline watching the ball all the way in even a top offense needs a tune-up once in a while let's see what happens on third down Blackman makes the catch and breaks a tackle down the sideline goes Justin Blackman stepped out of bounds at about the 17 yard line gain of 33 you have a big strong receiver like that 215 220 pounds just those little slant routes and let him use his body that's a tough 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 matchup for any undersized corner Flags down. This might be a false start. It will be against Oklahoma State. False start on the offense. Number 61. Five yard penalty. First down. Thing about Blackman, you can see right here, just a little inside move. He's had a drop. You know, back to Janine's story, he, he's had a drop just about every game. But he'll beat you up. I mean, he'll block you. And he's a big physical, physical receiver. KJ Morton, crowd looking for a flag intended for Blackman as we check in with Robert Flores. All right, Bob, next week in Stillwater, Kansas State comes to town. Right now they're dealing with Oklahoma Landry Jones to Jazz Reynolds, and Oklahoma leads 20 to 17, but K-State is driving. Florida upsetting Georgia in Jacksonville 17 to 3. Kansas State and Bill Snyder, remarkable. No upset so far here in Stillwater as Justin Blackman scoops up a pass inside the 15 yard line. It will be third down though, so a chance again for Baylor to get a stop on defense inside the 15. Third down. And a long seven, close to eight. If you're Phil Bennett, you got burnt on that blitz. Remember the long run against zero coverage? You're so timid to come back to it. I think they're just going to rush four here and try to hang on. Reading. Well protected again. Again, he's got Blackman. It's a step back move. And Baylor tries to converge Blackman about a yard short of the first down. He just about got it. Now what does Mike Gundy do up three touchdowns? Looks like he'll go for it on fourth and one. I think Justin Blackman wants to go for it. Well, you know Justin Blackman wants to go for it. <laughs> He's going to let this clock run down. Give him a chance to think about it a little bit because you do have the sure three. So he'll call timeout with two on the play clock and 4.48 to go before halftime. Will Oklahoma State try on fourth and one when we come back? State with guns a blazing today. 21 0, they lead Baylor. And on fourth down a yard, Mike Gundy called timeout and decided to leave his offense on the field at the eight yard line. And in this little diamond power set right here, three back look. <laughs> to Blackman. He makes the catch. Touchdown. Well, he wanted to go for it, and he made the right decision right there for Mike Gundy. That was a pretty throw. This is about as pretty as you can deliver it over that outside shoulder. I don't think he has possession. I think that call is going to be overturned. It was ruled a touchdown. I guess the question is, does he have possession while his left foot yeah. is still on the ground? Because his right foot clearly lands out of bounds. 
the and Ark Riles, is under review. Ark Riles was down the sideline. He was ready to call a timeout because he believed the officials yeah. weren't getting the buzz down from the replay booth that was necessary, but before he has to call timeout, prior to the point after, they do buzz it. Now, is the ball in his hands with his left foot on the ground? He's got it, left foot up off the ground, oh. right foot out of bounds. That's his first foot down right there with possession. His right foot was on the line. That's a big, big call that's going to be overturned. It's so close to him having possession of the football with his left foot still on the ground. Clearly, his right foot's out of bounds, but I guess the question yeah. is, is the right foot the first foot that counts? I thought it was. Once he has possession of the football. Let's see, ball. In his hands, right left foot now on the he ground. Has possession, and right now that right foot's on the ground. Well, here's the the issue, though, Coach. Not not only was it fourth down, so if it turns out yeah. that they reverse the call, Baylor would get the football, It'd almost be the right. equivalent of a turnover. Right. But there has to be indisputable video evidence to overturn the call on the field, and the call on the field was a touchdown. I think it's indisputable to overturn that call myself. Quick decision. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. Uh, they're going to say his foot was on the ground with the ball in his hands. That takes all life out of Baylor. but the solution normally for the offense for Oklahoma State, the quarterback finds this guy, Brandon Wheaton and Justin Blackman. What a combination these two have been. Yeah, these are two superstar players in an offense that really takes advantage of their abilities. Take a look at some of the work Justin Blackman has done today, and he is a load to handle. Of Blackman might be the most impressive element to his game. You know he's got speed, you know he's got great hands, but he can break a tackle. He, he can make a move in the open field with a stiff arm. He's got the ability, once he gets the ball in his hands, that it is really hard for that first defender to get him yeah, on the ground. Yeah, and they've had those kind of guys. You think back, Des Bryant was sure. that kind of receiver. They've got a young guy, Michael Harrison, number seven, that we'll see here in a little bit the same style. They've been able to kind of capture that big physical receiver and convince them Oklahoma State's the place where they're going to take advantage of his abilities. Antoine Goodley on the return about the 17 yard line. It's time to answer our AFLAC trivia question. Brandon Wheaton's career passing yards third all time in Oklahoma State history. Who is he chasing? Well, number two is his coach, Mike Gundy, the all-time leader in total offense in Big 8 history. Just shy of 8,000 passing yards. Zach Robinson, by the way, a little over 10,000 yards, number one in the Cowboy record books. But by the time this year's over, it'll be interesting to see how high Brandon Whedon's able to climb those charts. Tevin Reese, first down for Baylor. Actually coached against Mike Gundy up here at about 1985, 86 or 87 with Texas A&M. We came up here. They put a whipping on us. I mean, they had Barry Sanders, Hartley Dykes at wide receiver. I tell you, he's got it going at Oklahoma State. You walk through these facilities as I did this morning, the locker room, the weight room. They have something special going here in Stillwater. Well, they've got something special in a luxury box right beneath us at the 50-yard line. <laughs> As Ganaway. Picks up the first down. A gain of about three. ABC Tuesday, the new night for laughs with Tuesday's number one new comedy, Last Man Standing. Tim Allen is the perfect dad, raising three daughters the only way he knows how. Funny. Tim Allen is the last man standing. All new Tuesday, 8, 7 central on ABC. I'll tell you, with five kids under the age of 10, 
We could call you the last man standing. At best. <laughs> Griffin up the middle. In stride, he finds Kendall Wright. That's a big play for Baylor. And they've made a few, and Griffin's hurt. Griffin somehow is able to pop up. Yeah, he's one of those guys. Field. He spends a lot of time on that map. We've seen him in other games. He's pretty dramatic, <laughs> but he always bounces up and gets back to that huddle, it seems. Jamie Blatnick, number three in the Big 12, with six sacks so far this season, drove Griffin into the turf. And it looks like Griffin, that right shoulder might not be 100%. They'll go play action, though. Over the middle, incomplete. That ball sailed on him. Tevin Reese, the intended receiver. You can see why that touchdown ruling that stood to Justin Blackman was so big. I mean, if it was 21 nothing, how quickly Baylor could get up and down that field. So at 28 nothing now, you know, it could be insurmountable, but the quickness that they can strike back, it's just all about can they get points. Sampson stays in bounds and takes an extra hit about two yards shy of a first down Broderick Brown was the first man there for Oklahoma State it'll be third down and about two Third and two. And Ganaway is very close to the first down. Blatnick made the stop. It might be fourth down again, though, for Baylor. Well, I don't think if it's fourth down, they're going to run that quarterback sneak again. The well, they're bringing in the heavy personnel. I mean, you've got to hand it to Ganaway at 240 pounds at some point, don't you? It looks like quarterback sneak again, the way they're set up there. Fourth down and one. That's a bunch of checking on fourth and one. Wow. Play clock down to six. Play clock at two. Timeout call. By the time they started their check with me to the sideline, there was only about 12, maybe 11 seconds on the play clock, and they just didn't have enough time yeah, to get themselves not, reorganized. It's not bad to just huddle sometimes, right, on a fourth and short. Just huddle up. Get your communication down and then come up and execute. Let's check our Big 12 conference update brought to you by Dr. Pepper 10. And in the second quarter, a tight one between Oklahoma and Kansas State. Missouri comes from behind to get an overtime win against Texas A&M. And later on tonight, Texas and Texas Tech also in the top 25 of the BCS in action. You know, Kansas State, you talk about opposite styles they lead the country I think in time of possession Bill Snow the quarterback runs for about 100 yards a game Colin Klein no stars on that team you know Bill Snyder's proven it again that you can still do it in the old school way if you have a disciplined well-coached team it's really remarkable right we did them a couple weeks ago their talent level is getting better but their talent level is nowhere near what some of these other elite teams He are. just wants to shorten the game. Yeah, and he's doing it. It drives the fans crazy in Manhattan, but he's they're happy in that parking lot in that post-game celebration. Well, after the timeout, here we go. They will run it right up the middle with Glasgow Martin. And a first down on fourth and one for Baylor. Now, Baylor's average scoring drive this year is a minute and 59 seconds so needless to say even without timeouts they've got plenty of time with 150 to go before halftime over the middle tipped ball intercepted again Daytuan low breaking tackles all the way out to the 45 yard line hard to believe Hard to believe. A formula that may take them to the national championship. It is unbelievable how they band, band, band 
on defense, but force turnovers. That is 17 turn interceptions, I believe, on the year for this defense. Again, the hard play action, ball poorly thrown. These players have bought in to this formula. I don't know how they keep it going because there's some good fortune involved with turnovers, but they continue to do it. Now Brandon Whedon will try and attack before halftime. He goes downfield. In stride inside the 20 yard line. Tracy Moore got a step. And one snap after the turnover, Oklahoma State's back in the red zone. Draw play. Randall spins down to about the six yard line, close to a first down. Not sure how many plays Baylor has in the first half. 56. 56 plays and zero points. I mean, this offense of Oklahoma State is fresh. They haven't been on the field much. Baylor has 19 first downs and 56 plays. Randall walks into the end zone with another Cowboy touchdown. In his last 90 minutes of football, Joseph Randall now has seven touchdowns. We don't talk much about these linemen in this game, but it's a good block right here by Garner right there up on the second level. Forty seconds to go in the first half. Oklahoma State with a 35 to nothing lead. You can see ESPN everywhere, by the way, on your tablet, on your smartphone, wherever you are. ESPN College Football is streaming live on your computer, tablet, or smartphone via WatchESPN.com and the Watch ESPN app. It is amazing if you showed someone the box score of this game and then all showed them the scoreboard. Yeah, they, I mean, you, that, that guy just saw it. That's it. He, he, you know what? <laughs> he didn't have the box score in front of him. All he, he sees is the it. scoreboard. He's seen this before because A&M two weeks ago had 680 yards offense. Oklahoma State last year had 725 yards offense. But this is unbelievable. 56 plays, 250 yards for Baylor, and zero points. They haven't punted yet. And if you're Baylor, you got to be thankful Oklahoma State only has 31 plays because they have 311 yards and only 31 plays and 35 points. And pardon me, one punt. One punt in the first half for Baylor, and they're down 35 to nothing. You wonder if Oklahoma State week to week can continue to live off of turnovers the way that they do, and then every single week they're plus two or plus three in the in the plus minus category. They find ways to take the ball away. Antoine Goodley takes a knee. With just four races left, Carl Edwards looks to maintain his points lead while Kevin Harvick tries to rebound with a second straight win. At the tiny half mile, the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup continues at Martinsville. Coverage begins on ESPN Sunday at 1 Eastern. Always a little bit different strategy on that track, that tiny half mile. I like the fact that you, during the game, will have a blog while you watch the race that people can follow to get Bob Davies' <laughs> inside thoughts. NASCAR update, focus points for the NASCAR. Exactly. Yeah. gets a yard and that might take us to the end of the first half unless Baylor tries to get a few more well, snaps so we do a locker room alert every week our locker room alert this week I was in that locker room of Oklahoma State's before the game it's the nicest locker room I've ever been in the plushest I think Oklahoma State can go in there and relax pretty much and enjoy the plushness of that locker room in this 
Lasko Martin out to about the 28-yard line. What's the locker room alert for Baylor? It's just what we said to start the game. It's about turnovers and scoring touchdowns in the red zone. But you've got to be impressed with Oklahoma State. I mean, this plan has got them to 7-0 and and controlling their own destiny to the national championship game. I mean, they're on fire right now and still want it. Quickly, let's go down to Janine Edwards. What is it? Coach, Coach Riles, not the way you or any of us envisioned this first half. How do you keep your guys up and fighting at this point? Yeah, that's what we'll see. You know, that's why we do what we do. If we've uh, got some substance, we'll come out and fight. I think we got substance. Thanks, Coach. That's where being a sideline reporter in college football is not the best job in the world. As Janine Edwards with a depressed Art Riles. Easy to see why the halftime report's coming up. For Baylor, number three, Oklahoma State, continues to send a message to the country that at 35 to nothing, this is a team that is very real about where they are in the BCS. Bob Wischusen, Bob Davey, Jeanine Edwards here in Stillwater. It's amazing too, Coach, they have a formula that seems to work almost every time they take the field. They live off turnovers. They turn them into points, a fast break offense, and that's how they open up yeah, the big I mean, lead the first at, half. Look at the defense in the first half. Three turnovers forced. One was on special teams, but three turnovers. They stopped Baylor twice on fourth down, which really to me is like a turnover because you change possession. Basically, you can say that was five turnovers generated defensively in the first half. And to make matters worse for the Bears, Oklahoma State will start the second half with the football. Justin Gilbert fell down, got back up, and got hit inside the five-yard line. Driven back in the end zone, but forward progress will bring the ball back out close to the six-yard line. Herschel Sims made the stop. And as we check our Pacific Life game summary, and there's a chance that Baylor set a record for most plays without points in the first half as they began the game with a 16-play drive that got shut down inside the one yard line. And really that was the a, a copy a photo of what was coming in the rest of the first half Baylor with what over 50 some plays in the first half and zero points but their inability to stop Oklahoma State I mean they have not slowed Oklahoma State's offense down. Bobbled ball Blackman took his eyes off it and dropped it it'll be second down and ten as we check in with Janine. Well, Bob and Bob, Coach Gundy told me that he reminded his team in the locker room that they've got to play two halves. He said, remember, we need to respect Baylor. I want just as much energy and enthusiasm in the second half as you showed me in the first. And nothing's changed for them with their highest BCS ranking ever. He said, we're not going to play under pressure. We're not going to coach under pressure. We just want to keep having fun. They had fun in the first half. A little flip to Blackman, and he's brought down at the five-yard line by Terrence Lloyd. So it will be third down and 11 for Oklahoma State at their own five. Yeah, I was worried a little bit about Oklahoma State, maybe a letdown because they came off the road. They had two big road wins at Missouri, at Texas. Sometimes you let down a little bit at home. And you've been on the road with two big games they circled early in the year. Whedon swings one in the end zone to Randall. And Randall bumped out at about the seven yard line. Good job by Joe Williams to stand his ground. And Baylor forces a three downs and out on the opening possession here in the second half, and they should get great field position. And you know the drill. I mean, in these kind of games, so lopsided, both coaches go in, shoot, and they talk about it's nothing, nothing. You know, that half's over. That doesn't mean anything. Let's just go play the second half like it's 0-0. Zero, zero. You know, Baylor comes out. Worst case scenario for Baylor. They came after the punter. Quinn Sharp got it off, and they rocked the kicker. A flag thrown in the end zone. Baylor sold out to block the punt. Brody Trahan, the linebacker, it looked like made contact with Sharp. Is this a running into the kicker or a roughing the kicker penalty? If it's roughing the kicker, that is the equivalent of a turnover. Yeah, exactly. That'd be the sixth turnover of the game. I think I just saw a mouth five-yard penalty. It wouldn't be a first down. I think that's what Mike Gundy is complaining about as well. And that's a judgment call, so that can't be reviewed on the degree of Running severity. Running the kicker on the defense. Penalties decline. 
first down there. So they'll wave away the flag because Quinn Sharp actually changed field position with a pretty good kick in spite of the fact that he was run into. He got it all the way to the 42 yard line of Baylor. Well, this is one of the best punters and kickers in the country. Boy. Probably a good call. That's not roughing the kicker. You don't I mean, think? Not even close. He barely even grazed him, and Sharp knew. Now, if you were Quinn Sharp, and you were up in that vulnerable position, up in the air, and that guy hits you in the hip, you wouldn't think that was roughing. If I was Quinn Sharp, I'd be walking around on the sideline saying to myself, you know what? I almost got a gold statue for that acting job in the end zone, but it's a close miss. I think that's a good call by the officials. So still pretty good field position for the Bears, and Ganaway tries to take advantage. Close to a first down, a gain of nine. <laughs> Tevin Reese has the first down. Lost the football. The officials will say it's live. The ball wasn't blown dead, and it's picked up by Oklahoma State. Another turnover, and this one could result in points. All the way down inside the 10 to about the seven yard line goes Broderick Brown. What more could possibly go wrong for Baylor in this game? Because at some point you say, Yeah, the key is going to be, did the whistle blow? Let's listen in and see if we can hear it. I don't hear a whistle there. That's rule the fumble. Everyone stopped playing. The Baylor sideline is completely stunned in its first and goal Oklahoma State. And it looks like they will not even go to review to see. Another touchdown for Joseph Randall. Touchdown weeks for Joseph Randall. And it's 42 to nothing. Four turnovers by Baylor. And Oklahoma State coach has taken advantage of them all. Dominant performance by the Cowboys and doing it, coach, the way they do it, taking the ball away and capitalizing. Yeah, let's go back and take a closer look. Great effort by Sean Lewis. The ball was clearly out. It's a great effort, staying alive, keeping that ball alive. No whistle. Fourth turnover of the day for Baylor. Including two stops on fourth down. So it's really the equivalent of six turnovers. And the game for Baylor. Antoine Goodley. Brought down at about the 28-yard line. And we take a look at what is upcoming tonight. Four games in prime time across our ESPN networks. And, of course, the two road tests, really, the ones we will focus on for Clemson and Stanford as Dabo Sweeney's group has to deal with that triple option of Georgia Tech. And, well, it's a great quarterback matchup tonight, Coach the Coliseum. Yeah, and both affect Oklahoma State. You know, Oklahoma State sitting there third undefeated. I think if they win out, they'll play in the BCS championship, in my opinion. But Clemson, Stanford still undefeated. Both would have conference championship games to play. Away, brought down by Alex Elkins, number 37 for Oklahoma State. He's a linebacker, by the way, as a junior. He transferred in from Blinn Community College. He didn't play high school football. When he was at Blinn Community College, he went to an open tryout. Said, you know, I'm going to give football a shot. Now he's starting 
That weak side linebacker for the third ranked team in the country. But you never know where you're going to find a player as Terrence Williams, right? Picks up a first down. I mean, here's a kid. Doesn't play a down of high school football, and all we do is analyze to death this recruiting class, that recruiting class. He's a three star, four star, five star recruit. You got the number three team in the country with a guy that didn't play high school football, starting a linebacker. Kendall Wright, a gain of nine. You know, talking to Bill Young yesterday, he's a guy with a lot of pride, their defensive coordinator. I mean, they are a little embarrassed about being 103rd in total defense. But he brought up some great points, and he wasn't making excuses. Those statistics are really deceiving because Oklahoma State's been hit ahead in a lot of games. They've played a lot of young guys at the end of games. It isn't about statistics. You've had to reorganize your goals. You know, this guy's coached at USC, Oklahoma, Ohio State. It isn't about total yards anymore or even points necessarily. It's about turnovers. Up the middle on third down, plenty of room for Glasgow Martin. And he has a first down for Baylor inside the Oklahoma State 40. Gain of 13. Well, there are the numbers yeah. for the national rankings for Oklahoma State's defense. And they're giving up a bunch of yards today as well. They just have taken the ball away. But it's interesting, 103 in total, but only 66th in scoring. Griffin looks for the home run for Williams. Terrence Williams interfered with. Justin Gilbert will be called for the penalty. Fans want incidental contact. Pass interference on the defense number four. 15 yard penalty. First out. Take a quick look at the end. That's interference. You agree? No question. He grabbed his jersey. Let's see if Baylor can just get on the scoreboard here. Well, we've been here before. Baylor just about inside the red zone. Ganaway right up the middle again. Close to another Baylor first down. It looks like he's got it down to about the 12 yard line where it will be first and 10. You see the problem. If you play that too deep shell, you have to take those linebackers out and cover down. You only have five in the box. It's stealing running the ball against it in there. Here they go now. Bill Young's going to heat them up a little bit. And Gannaway has nowhere to go this time. You know, by spreading that field out with those wide receivers so extended, as we know, it just stretches that defense so wide and it makes it so easy to read what coverage they're in. Because you have to spread out and cover down on those receivers, where in the old days everybody played in the box, and you could disguise things so much longer. Here you have to widen because the receivers are out there so wide. Griffin will keep it this time. Can't escape. Dion Amade was able to grab him around the ankles and drag him down at about the 12 yard line. Gain of maybe a yard, but it will be third down and 10. Under pressure. Now it'll be fourth down. Sack back close to the 20-yard line. Jamie Blacknick, seventh sack of the year. They really rushed two players on that. They were in a three-man front, and the nose guard just spied, anticipating scramble from Robert Griffin. Blacknick's a guy that's had a great year for them. That's his seventh sack of the season. Aaron Jones missed from 48 earlier. He has not made a field goal in a month. This time from 36. And Baylor is finally on the board. 
The Bears have to settle for three in the third. ESPN's College Football on ABC. Brought to you by Nissan, proud partner of the Heisman Trophy. And AT&T, get it faster with 4G. We think possible. Halloween is coming up on Monday, and it has been a nightmare so far for Baylor as they are about to join the rest of the tombstones out in the Oklahoma State graveyard. 42 to 3. Yeah. Baylor finally gets on the board to squeeze back within 39 here as Oklahoma State's about to get the football back. It's Halloween, right? Halloween Monday night for you? Monday night for everybody. Yeah, everybody. Yeah. I thought maybe back in Jersey they did a little different. No, we, we do it on the 31st in Jersey also. Just don't be sneaking around your kids. Uh, <laughs> Goodie bag stealing those almond joys. I'll, out I'll of tell it. you right now, there will not be a mounds bar to survive any bucket in our house. With just four races left, Carl Edwards looks to maintain his points lead while Kevin Harvick tries to rebound with his second straight win at the tiny half mile. The chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup continues at Martinsville. Coverage begins tomorrow on ESPN at 1 Eastern. Don't sleep on Kevin Harvick. That's all I'm saying, coach. Be interesting here Mike Gundy mentioned last week they got the lead on Missouri came out and ran it Todd Monk in the offensive coordinator guy interesting guy you know was here then went to Jacksonville in the NFL back he's a run first guy but he feels disappointed sometimes if they don't throw it every down because they don't use all their weapons Jeremy Smith breaks a tackle Jeremy Smith with breakaway speed down to the 15 yard line and this game is getting to be embarrassing for the Baylor Bears 63 yard gain for Smith and he's hurt yeah just count the number of the guys in the box you have five defenders in the box you have five offensive linemen so that's a hat on the hat and right now he just outruns the angle right there of the safety Mike Hicks but anytime you can get a hat on a hat or a blocker on a defender, the ball carrier in essence is the extra guy. And with those big splits in there, I mean, it just caused a gaping hole. Well, Smith shaken up on the long run. Oklahoma State has scored five more points than they've run plays. And they are in the red zone again. You know, this tandem of running backs here, Joseph Randall, Jeremy Smith, Todd Munkin we talked about, Offensive coordinator, it's hard to see him in there. But uh, NFL background. We had an interesting conversation with him yesterday about Very uh, much so. Brandon Whedon and Brandon Whedon's potential to play at the next level. Draw play again, Randall. To about the 15 yard line as we check in with Jeanine Edwards. Well, guys, you mentioned Todd Monken, and I can tell you that what the Cowboys offense has done since they were last on the field, absolutely nothing. They sat here relaxed. They were just kind of looking around, smiling at the crowd. Offensive line coach Joe Wickline dropped no plays, didn't coach his guys up at all, and I guess a 39 point lead will give you that cushion. And 63 yard run later proves their point. Yeah, What's the stress about? <laughs> Randall to about the 10 yard line. But I thought your conversation with Coach Munkin about Whedon was very interesting. This is a shotgun, oftentimes just one read and throw it type of an offense for Whedon and how that translates to the yeah, NFL. As it does with all these spread quarterbacks now in college football because it's make a decision and throw it. There's really no progression that develops. And you don't have to call out blocking schemes. You know, you don't do a lot of checking the protection at the line and that kind of thing because it's just such a spread quick game, like right there. Quick wide receiver hitch to Harrison, lost the football. It's on the ground, still loose and picked up by Baylor. Baylor finally gets a takeaway. Elliott Coffey out to the 41 yard line, or rather the 31 yard line. He knocked it free. He helps to get the recovery. Joe Williams in on the play as well. So Baylor gets a turnover. And Art Bryles at least sees his team now play with a little bit of pride after they gave up the big run. Let's take a look. He's carrying it a little loose, isn't he? That's a great example. We talked about Harrison, a lot like Justin Blackman, a great future here. He carried that ball so loose. 
Got to get it in there tighter, obviously, to your body. Good to see Baylor, though. Stay in there fighting. Forced the turnover. Griffin, high throw on the bubble screen to Kendall Wright. And that allows the Oklahoma State defenders to close. Markel Martin drops him for about a four-yard loss. I think they should have a limit the NCAA on how many bubble screens you could throw in a game. I really do. I, I know that sounds crazy. It's never going to happen. That, to me, is just overdone right now in college football. But if I was a head coach, I'd probably be running the heck out of that bubble screen. But that's the ninth ball thrown behind the line of scrimmage for Baylor today. Griffin over the middle. About two yards shy of a first down to Tevin Reese. And Jeremy Smith, by the way, shaken up on that long carry. And it looks like it's an injured hand. He's headed back to the locker room for x-rays. Third down for the Bears. Right at the first down marker, the catch made and spinning. And it looks like reaching clear of the chains is Lanier Sampson. Andre May there to drag him to the ground, but the Bears pick up a first down. Picking up first downs today has not been a problem for Baylor. They've got 24 first downs in the game and three points. Same play. Same result, first down. That time it's Kendall Wright that makes the stop, or makes the catch, pardon me. And in case you're just joining us, the scoreboard, pretty self-evident of the way this game has gone. 42 to three, Oklahoma State on top of Baylor, and it has been the Cowboys taking the ball away and denying the Bears points, especially in the red zone. Bob Schusen alongside Bob Davey here in Stillwater, Janine Edwards is with us as well. Baylor has moved the ball between the 20s, but they have self-destructed deep in Oklahoma State territory. And Griffin now a low throw intended for Sampson. That's a tough throw. You come off that quarterback to side play, running to his left, really a tough throw. I mean, Robert Griffin has to be frustrated for him. He's done so much for this Baylor program. Just hasn't been able to get him over the top. Not easy in this conference, in the Big 12. When, particularly when you come to a place like this and see the facilities and what this is all about here. Middle screen this time, caught by Terrence Williams. Talk about Oklahoma State, number of players from the state of Texas. They have beat Texas Big 12 school seven times. Today will be eight straight wins over Texas Big 12 schools. You look, 68 players on the roster from Texas. This will be their eighth win in a row against Big 12 Texas teams. They're going to keep on recruiting. Justin Gilbert down, holding his left knee. This is an NFL-type corner, Justin Gilbert. Coaches talked about him yesterday. Has the NFL body type. Explosive. And able to get to the sideline. So with Gilbert on the bench, third down and five coming up for Baylor. Larry Stevens, only a sophomore, moves in to replace Justin Gilbert. Look at Mike Gundy. Impressive yesterday. Just talking about how they take this hurry-up approach. Up-tempo offense, and have built their whole program around it. From how they practice to how they condition, you know, to, to the type of players they try to recruit. Well, we were talking about this when we watched the coaching tape on Friday, how precise their offense looks on tape. And the tape doesn't show you in the coaching cut up the minimal amount of time that takes place in between plays. Right. Says he gives the defensive coordinator they figured out four seconds to make a decision to wow. get the defense signal in. Third and five now for Bell. Only one deep safety for Oklahoma State. 
Three man rush. Griffin down the sideline looking for Terrence Williams. And he drops it in there. A flag down as well as Williams has it down to the four yard line. There's a glimpse of Robert Griffin in the deep ball. I think he's as accurate as anybody in the country. He does put a lot of air under it. It's a gain of 39 yards. We'll have to check the penalty as well. Dion Amade made the stop. Pass interference on the defense number 28. Penalties declined. First down. You see what happens, Bob, as you mentioned, when you go man to man, there was only one deep safety. The ball slightly underthrown, but clear, clear call right there. Good concentration to catch that. But if you play one on one, that ball's going up the top in a hurry. Down to about the two yard line goes Glasgow Martin. Maybe the yard and a half line. Tyler Johnson made the stop and Jordan Iver shaking up a bit on the play. This is the third time in the game that Baylor has been inside the five yard line. They were stopped on downs inside the one, a goal line stand on the opening possession of the game. And Robert Griffin threw an end zone interception to Justin Gilbert. Second down and goal. Again brought down shy of the goal line. Is Glasgow Martin? Did they drop the ball again? Another fumble and another turnover. A takeaway for Oklahoma State. Broderick Brown comes up with the recovery. This is incredible. It might have been Rashetti Jones that knocked it out. Maybe the new plan is let him run up and down the field and then get a turnover. Because that's what it seems like Oklahoma State does. There it is. You can make an argument he was down by contact. It's close, the right knee, but I don't think it was down. Great camera angle of it. Well, Baylor fans, things for the moment might be a little brighter as it looks like there's the a very good chance is under further review. that Glasgow Martin was down by contact. They're making the official announcement now that the replay booth is going to take a look on whether or not Martin just fumbled the football down at the one yard line. We took a look while we were away during commercial and watched the right arm of Martin holding the ball. And it looks like his elbow makes contact with the ground and then right. the ball pops out right there. He's down. The ground cannot cause a fumble. He had possession until the elbow hit the ground. I think it's going to be overturned. Of course, I thought Justin Blackman's touchdown catch would be overturned. Well, well you're one for this two. We I agree think this on this one. This one's a clearer, though. I think this one will be overturned. Yeah, we're going to agree on this one, which, if our first thought is right, I, that would make me two for two in replay reviews for the day, just for the record. Just in terms of keeping crew statistics. So now it's me and you in the booth. It's not us in the booth I'm, anymore. I'm just saying. All the just for today. All the camaraderie we've built during this season. The cohesive unit we've become. Well, let's get the official call. I mean, who's After keeping track? review, the ruling on the field stands as a fumble and recovery by the Damn. defense. Are you explain that one to me. I would need the replay booth to go a little bit deeper into their determination of whether or not Glasgow I mean, Martin was down. But you know, the bigger picture, I don't think I've ever seen a team defensively give as many yards and cause turnovers as the Oklahoma State Cowboys have done consistently all year. Blackman can't break a tackle. He's down at about the seven yard line. Joe Williams is able to slow up Justin Blackman. A and lot of good fortune though, right? In, in, turn, in turnovers. I mean, Baylor, Oklahoma State really had nothing to do with that turnover right there. In my opinion, maybe somebody touched that ball, but it looked like the elbow hit the ground and the ball came out. First down run by Joseph Randall. Well, if you think about it today, is that now five takeaways overall for Oklahoma State? They were minus one in the plus minus ratio after two games. So in their last nearly now six games, five games plus, they've got 26 takeaways on defense in about five and a half games. That, that's unbelievable. So is this. Blackman has to come back for the underthrown ball. And he still breaks free to the 35-yard line. 
I know this. They tell their defense, Oklahoma State, if we force a turnover, our offense will score a touchdown. And it doesn't matter if it's on the one-yard line or in the red zone. I mean, this offense thrives after those turnovers. Play action fake for Whedon. Wide open is Tracy Moore. I saw something last night where Brandon Wheaton wasn't ranked in the top five quarterbacks as far as NFL projections. You know, you had Robert Griffin was actually fifth. This kid is an NFL quarterback. I mean, you do the Jets game every week. You watch an NFL game in person every week, Bob. With his release, his maturity, his personality. There goes Randall. Down to the six-yard line. First and goal. Oklahoma State. And we've got another injured Baylor Bear. Mike Kicks. One of the two safeties for Baylor is down on the play. I think Whedon is a fascinating kind of dichotomy as an NFL prospect coach when you think about his age how much does that work for him or work against him a 28 year old former minor league baseball player so obviously there's the maturity element that works for him as a guy certainly you know just a just sit, a, a, a to wonderful him. young man it's it works like sitting, for him he's like sitting there talking to Mike Gundy yesterday I mean he is a obviously though could be a coach normally though when you draft a quarterback you think you're going to get a guy that's 21 22 years old rather than 28 years old um, having said that also though from a skill set standpoint, you talked yesterday about his release, about how he throws the football, just a magnificent engineering of the offense. You could see it's been a quick strike offense today for Oklahoma State, but in the nature of their offensive system, sure. how much of reading progressions running through, you know, kind of a pro style system sure. skill set does I he mean, have? You're guessing a little bit, but just sitting there listening to him talk about the other defenses in the Big 12, I mean, he is really smart. And I give him the benefit of the doubt with that. I mean, I'm, he's one of the top five college quarterbacks in this country. For Blackman again. It'll be second down and goal. These fans want more. <laughs> I mean, it's 42 to 3. They're slinging it, and the fans are pulling because they didn't get a pass interference call. It's fun to watch. Looking for touchdown number five. Gets to the two-yard line. Sam Hall made the stop. We talk all the time about Mike Gundy's skill position players, especially on the edge. He's got two really nice running backs in Randall and Smith, assuming Smith is okay. Third and goal. Again, Blackman on the fade. Oh. Got it again. Touchdown. How'd you like that throw? How do you stop it? Yeah, he cuts the split down. He has a lot of grass to the outside. Those guys spent a lot of time in the summer making that throw. That was pretty. Look how much he's cut down the split, almost to the hash. Gives himself a lot of field to work with. And look at that throw. You could not throw that any more perfectly. Impressive. That is the second 99-yard touchdown drive of the game for Oklahoma State. They've got a 49-3 lead as we check in with Janine. Well, Bob, it was announced yesterday that the Big 12 for the Big 12, and he told me that they had decided that they would stay at 10 teams, but it was not a unanimous decision. He said it was a split board. Some of them would like to go back to 12, and he said, who knows? He said there's a very slim...
chance that Missouri could stay. He said, and then we will stay at 11. But he said, you know what? This has been a time-consuming and difficult topic. He said, I'm actually getting kind of tired of it. I just want to move on and enjoy playing sports. Well, Janine, that's certainly understandable, especially considering his team's spot atop the Big 12 standings. And obviously, Oklahoma State will improve to 5-0 and and 8-0 on the season with their win today over Baylor as once again we've got the kickoff coming down to about the three yard line Darius Jones now close to the 28 yard line and coach Davey West Virginia with their basketball program obviously a big time football program it seems like just from program size and program visibility a nice addition to the Big 12. I'm wondering what other schools are out there that would make sense for the Big 12. Obviously TCU is a no brainer. If they wanted to get to 12, you don't want to get to 12 just for the sake of getting to 12. You want to add the right program. I know Louisville would love to be in the Big 12 until I read today that Rick Pitino said they're staying in the Big East, which makes sense to me from a basketball standpoint. And away up the middle for about but five you know, yards. One thing, Bob, we talk all the time about these players and entitlement. How these players, modern day players, think they deserve more. They feel more entitled. When you see senators involved, like from the state of West Virginia and Kentucky, last week there was a little deal about the Big 12 thing. No wonder players feel a, a, a feeling of self importance. And here Sampson breaks free. A little middle screen to Sampson. And he's down inside the 28-yard line to about the 27 of Oklahoma State before Daytuan Lowe ran him out. But just back to my point, when you have people in those kind of positions getting involved in conference affiliations, forget about geography. They're moving teams wherever they can get the best financial situation no with question. television contracts, financial security. I mean, these kids kind of look at it as they're pretty important now. You've got a lot of people involved in moving these schools around. You just wonder where it all ends. When you have West Virginia, Pitt, and Penn State in three different conferences that are all within 90 miles of each other, it's a little bit crazy, isn't it? Another hitch. And picking up a first down is Levi Norwood. Well, it also strikes me as odd that a, a conference like the Big East, and I am surprised that Louisville wouldn't look to get out of the Big East because their football program, they just added an upper deck to their stadium. The beautiful I mean, facility. It's a beautiful Great facility. Team. I mean, that, that's the Big East is no longer a viable football conference. I know this. West Virginia coming to this conference, they better get ready to play some defense because this offense, this offense is in this league right now, the best in the country. End of the third quarter, and it has been all Oklahoma State. They have taken the ball away. They have gotten a four touchdown performance for the second straight week from Joseph Randall. Another big performance from Justin Blackman as well. Two touchdowns on the fade in the corner. Oklahoma, Oklahoma we bit the number three team in the BCS. They have taken the ball away five times from Baylor. Although the Bears to start the fourth quarter are in business, but they've been in the red zone before. Here's Ganaway. Nice move in the side the five, and he's into the end zone for the first Baylor touchdown of the day. Baylor has run 82 plays in the game, and they finally score a touchdown. Tell you what, Art Browse right now, it's all about keeping that team going. You can see right now he appreciates the effort of these guys just hanging in there and playing. I mean, it's tough right now. I mean, give Baylor the credit now. So Baylor finally gets into the end zone. The coach's trophy presented by Dr. Pepper. That will go to the national champion. We'll of course have the BCS title game for you later on in January and the folks here in Stillwater know they've got a quarterback they've got a defense that takes the ball away and coach Davey they have a schedule left where they will probably be the favorite to win every game 
that remains, it all certainly still points to the Bedlam game against Oklahoma. The last game of the season, that first Saturday in December, as Josh Stewart gets out close to the 20-yard line. But there's no defense in America that will do more to help their team win than Oklahoma State's if they continue to average five takeaways a game. And that's what they've averaged over their last five plus games. Yeah, I mean, just get the ball back and they feel like the offense will score touchdowns. But, you know, no Big 12 Conference championship game this year. And that has to help Oklahoma State. I mean, it is right in front of them. If you look at their schedule, they're going to be favored in every game. No conference championship game. I mean, they control their own fate. Look out again. Another jailbreak. Herschel Sims, the true freshman. Touchdown. First carry, you go untouched. What was it, 80 yards? 81 yards untouched. Got a field though for Baylor. A lot of pride. A lot of pride on that coaching staff. Phil Bennett talked about before one of the best defensive coaches in the country. That's tough. Oklahoma State has beaten Baylor 14 of the last 15 times these two teams have met. But rarely as lopsided as today. 56 to 10. Well, again, just count the number of guys in the box. That's five in the box. Oklahoma State with five blockers. Now, watch how this unfolds. A hat on everybody. The back just patiently waits for the crease. And now you've got a great angle right here to make the play. That shouldn't be a touchdown. That's just poor angles. And now it's just off to the races. A young man highly recruited out of Texas. First carry goes 81 yards, but that shouldn't have been a touchdown. Well, Oklahoma State beating a Baylor team that at one point was ranked 15th this year in the top 25. What team that remains for Oklahoma State, will they not be a favorite to beat? They're going to be a favorite in every one, but that will be a shootout in Lubbock, Texas. Texas Tech proved last week, last Saturday night, in Norman, they can move the ball. They're a very similar team to Oklahoma State. And Lubbock is a tough, tough place to play. That game would concern me more. Well, they're all going to concern me. But the open date before Oklahoma, going to Lubbock would be the one that I'd circle right now. Just concern. Hesitation, and now you take a knee. Yeah, as long as that ball didn't cross the plane of that goal line, he doesn't have to come out. One of the funniest shows on television, Tim Allen is the star. Last man standing, all new on ABC, Tuesday night, 8, 7 central. And what has not been a comedy this afternoon has been this game for the Baylor Bears because they came in here with high hopes. They've got a legitimate Heisman level talented quarterback in Robert Griffin. Now, I don't think anyone is going to take Robert Griffin over Andrew Luck in the NFL draft. But if you look just at the numbers that Griffin has put up this season, very much coming into today in the Heisman conversation. But strikeout after strikeout in the scoring area, turnovers. Here's Kendall Wright picking up about eight maybe nine yards and Oklahoma State has taken advantage of every open door that Baylor has given them today to make this a lopsided game. I think we both thought and I know Art Rouse thought coming off the open date that Baylor would quite honestly play better. They haven't played very well. In stride midfield Terrence Williams he might go. <laughs> Touchdown. <laughs> Seventy three yard score. Wow. That's what we expected right there. I mean Oklahoma State left the middle of the field open. That was too easy of a throw. These teams aren't going to just run the ball and get to the end of this game. <laughs> that's quite obvious. I mean they're going to keep throwing it. Ah! 
Baylor has 530 yards of total offense and only 17 yards on the 17 points on the board. Now let's take a look at this touchdown. What you're going to see is this middle of the field wide open. Look at all that grass. And with that kind of angle, just outruns everybody from Oklahoma State. ESPN's College Football on ABC. Brought to you by K Jewelers, the number one jewelry store in America. Every kiss begins with K. Chevrolet and their award-winning cars, trucks, and crossovers. And the Home Depot. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. The sea of orange parade seen by thousands of OSU alumni, family, and friends at Pack Main Street here in downtown Stillwater this morning, all part of the festivities of homecoming weekend. And I don't know that Anyone expected Baylor to be quite this type of a homecoming, almost a traditional homecoming opponent today. Normally homecoming is a pretty lopsided result, and it has been that for Oklahoma State. Justin Gilbert with a cutback on the kickoff return. There he goes. To the 44-yard line before he's brought down by the kicker, Ben Parks. Let's check our Pacific Life game summary. And we have seen yards put up today by Baylor, but five turnovers resulting in four Oklahoma State touchdowns. See if Baylor can tighten down and stop this run a little bit. Oklahoma State's really gassed him. A little different look, Oklahoma State in a two-back set. Keep it on the ground with Herschel Sims. He picked up about a yard. Sam Hall made the stop, and Robert Flores gives us another update. All right, Bob. AT&T All-America Player of the Week update on Thursday night. Houston's Case Keenum. Nine touchdowns against Rice as the Cougars won the Bayou Bucket. That's a career mark for Keenum. You can text VOTE to 55862 for a chance at a trip to the national title. All right, Robert Wheaton keeps on working on that secondary for Baylor. That's on uh, Colton Shelf, former walk-on senior wide receiver with his ninth catch of the season. Comes up about two and a half yards shy of a first down. So third down and three. Up 56 to 17. The Cowboys not exactly milking the play clock. Herschel Sims. With a first down. Got it by a half yard. You know, very interesting. Talking to Mike Gundy. And you were talking to him about the goal of this tempo of offense. And he said, we want controlled chaos. We want to put pressure on the defensive play caller. And we want to eliminate the ability of a defense to wristband us. Yeah. Ah. Great point. <laughs> Sims again. About seven more yards. But what's, what's the goal there? Could you well, actually you get a defense that would have oh, no the question. inability to look down at the wrist? They've had it happen. Tulsa tried to call defenses off the wristband. And for fans at home, what we're talking about, you put all your defenses, just like the offense does, on a wristband. And the defensive signal caller signals in wristband 22, and those kids go down to 22 and read. But the print's so small that it takes time to read it. <laughs> and they go so fast tempo that the ball was snapped 10 times when Tulsa's kids were looking down at the wristband. Whedon throws that one away. Over the head of Charlie Moore. Crowd looking for a flag as Moore got tied up with Mike Hicks. But the tempo, and obviously now they're slowed down a little bit. But when you give the defensive coordinator four seconds to make up his mind and then signal the defense in, and you have kids look down at the wristband and take their eyes off the field, that's a liability. It's taking the wristband out of college football versus these spread up tempo teams. Third and four, they'll run it again with Sims. And he's got another first down. A lot of fans, and it's a legitimate question, why is Brandon Whedon in the game? I think first of all, Mike Gundy's not really worried about him getting injured. He's going to get rid of the ball so quick and hand the ball off. We'll talk about up-tempo. Here's Sims again. Yeah. 
I mean, this would be a good time, obviously, to get the backup quarterback, Clint Shelf, in the game. Again, there's 11 minutes and 30 seconds left, and the nature of the coach is to win this one. Make sure you win this one first, which obviously they will. But just keep executing a little bit here. And I think if they get one more score, I think you'll see this guy right here. I would hope you would see this guy. Yeah. Yeah, the way this game's gone now in college football, you got to get to the 60s before you put the backup in. Used to be the 30s or 40s, now it's the 60s. Third down and three. And there is a first down completion to Colton Shelf. See how quickly he gets rid of that ball. I mean, his release, you know, he told us what he tells. He was a shortstop as a little kid. He's turned that double play a lot of times in the backyard now because he catches a shotgun snap and gets rid of it as fast as any kid I've seen. Well, that completion puts the Cowboys over 600 yards of total offense. They are averaging 13 and a half yards per rushing attempt in the game. And there's the quick release again to Chelf. Colton Shelf's a former walk-on. He's the senior. His younger brother, Clint, is the backup quarterback. So Yeah, let's get that combination. Yeah, there's going. half a chance let's to get, get a brother-to-brother brother brother combination. We've seen enough of Whedon, the black <laughs> one. Let's get the Chelf Chelf thing going. If he's watching that clock tick down, he's saying, Coach, I mean, it's 56 to 17. Now. Third down and about seven coming up for Oklahoma State. Coach, I'm right here, Coach. I'm right over your left shoulder. <laughs> Come on, Coach. I mean, these guys stay all summer, work just as hard as the guy out there playing. Throw him a bone. He's warming that hand up. <laughs> Saying I can hand it to Herschel Sims just yeah. as well. Coach, I promise I won't screw it up. I'm not going to let him come back from 50, 56, 17. You can trust me. Whedon on third down. Deep one to the sideline. And a drop. And that's the older Chelf who couldn't hold on. Now it's fourth and seven. Yeah, watch his release, Bob. I mean, he, he a lot of times doesn't even worry about the laces. You know, everybody, like when you were a little guy learning to throw, you line those fingers up on the laces. On the short routes, he just catches and throws it. Doesn't even worry about that. So a 36-yard field goal attempt for Quinn Sharp. Here's another thing they have going for him. This kid is a heck of a player, this kicker. He does it all. He's the punter, the kickoff specialist, the field goal kicker. And he is now over 85% on the season on field goal attempts. Stillwater, Oklahoma. This will be the site the last weekend of the season for Oklahoma State and Oklahoma. And both of the big Oklahoma schools are rolling right now. The Sooners on top 58 to 17 in Manhattan, Kansas. And it's 59 to 17. Cowboys over the Baylor Bears. And another knee taken by Darius Jones after Quinn Sharp sends it deep as we take a look at our good hands play of the game brought to you by Allstate and one of two fade patterns in that back right corner, Wheaton to Blackman. They're almost identical plays. Players spend so much time in the summer together. Forget about those days when they used to go back home for two months and then come back to campus, and you really see how it benefits these offenses. They're having fun down there if you're a cowboy. It's good stuff. Tipped ball on the screen attempt to Kendall Wright. James Thomas came on a blitz and knocked it down. I think we've seen the end. Oh, yeah. The shelf to shelf connection is about ready to be unleashed in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Really? Unleashed? Is that, is that where you want to go? That's it. They've, they've had it in the cage all year, and now they are really ready to turn it loose. Griffin flags down. Same pattern that resulted in a touchdown for Terrence Williams. The last possession for Boy. Baylor gets them out close to midfield, but it's coming back. Yeah, we've got a big-time hold 
second down. One of those defensive linemen was lassoed in there. Only the second penalty of the game against Baylor. That's funny. Listening to Art Briles talk, we had their game against Kansas State a few weeks ago where they lost a thriller in Manhattan. It was a great football game. Came down to the last four minutes. Robert Griffin threw his first interception of the season. Down in his own end, as this time he finds Tevin Reese. And that turned out to be what caused the game-winning field goal to be kicked by Kansas State. But Bryles said leading into that game when Baylor was 15th. They had that big win over TCU. They were the top scoring offensive team of the country. And I asked him about being 15th as his team now faces third down and 11. Looking for a first down is Kendall Wright. And he's not going to get there. It'll be fourth down. But I remember asking him, how about being 15th and the excitement on campus and around your program? And he said at the time, before the Kansas State game, what have we done? We've just started the football season pretty well. That's all we've done. We've got nine Big 12 games out ahead of us. And with that Southern accent, as they go for it on fourth down, he said, if you keep on sticking your lips out there, you're fixing to get punched. And down the sideline goes Terrence Williams. He has a first down. He said 15th could become 55th in the country in a few weeks if you're not careful. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, it kind of became a self-fulfilling prophecy. Well, he knows better than anybody what conference they're in and the demands and the challenges in this conference. Another tipped ball. To that Baylor, one by Ryan Robinson. You've been to wake up. Great place. Baylor's a great university, but it's a private, small university. They've upgraded their facilities. But it's not even in the league of what you come here to Stillwater, Oklahoma and see as far as advantages or College Station, Texas or Austin or Norman. Jared Salubi about two yards shy of a first down. I'll say this what he's done Art Browse and it's in a large part to Robert Griffin. They've made Baylor a big game. We went to Manhattan the people around Manhattan were excited to see Baylor play. Same thing here this week in Stillwater. I mean, they are relevant, relevant right now in college football, but they keep getting blown out when they get to this point. Back to the things Art Browse talked about. The same thing happened last year. They tease you, and then they run out of gas. And that's the difficulty they have. Salubi so finds a crease to midfield to pick up a four as we quickly take a look at what we have on the docket tonight. Wisconsin trying to bounce back from the Hail Mary loss to Michigan State. They will be in Columbus to take on the Buckeyes and number five and number six Clemson and Stanford both on the road at eight Eastern. Third down and about five upcoming after Salubi picked up a couple. Caleb Levy brought him down. Clock winds down inside of 6.20 to go. Griffin with a strike thrown. That's good for a first down to Terrence Williams. You know, it's hard to imagine that a game that's 59 to 17 could have worked out much differently. But the tone was set in the first drive of the game when Baylor got shut down at the one yard line. The goal line stand by Oklahoma State turned the entire feel of this game around. And then a fumbled kickoff return that resulted in another quick touchdown as Kendall Wright makes a tough catch popped by Zach well, you know, Craig. We, we do the coach speak every week. And I go back to last week, the coach speak of the Bill Parcells. How many times does a skunk have to hit you in the face before you smell it coming? <laughs> but it really does apply to this game, right? I mean, you, we, you knew and Baylor knew every potential thing that could go wrong, and it did. All of it. Red zone offense. Yep. Don't turn it over against Oklahoma. Especially State. in the red zone. Third down defense couldn't get off the field. All the things that you talked about, I mean, they smelled the skunk. 
They just couldn't do anything about it. Griffin sets up the screen. Wide open to Ganaway. And Ganaway's down to about the 11-yard line. And this is frustrating for Bill Young. We talked about, you see a lot of their starters still in there. But some guys, Sean Lewis, Rashidi Jones coming back in. You know, when you're blowing people out like this, you lose your edge on defense. And then you put some young guys in the other team. Of course, Baylor's gone up and down the field all day. They're going to end up with about 600 yards offense in this game. They have it now. Tevin Reese to about the six-yard line. They've already gone over 600 yards of total offense in the game. But for old defensive coordinators, and I'm talking about experienced defensive coordinators, this is a bitter pill to swallow. I mean, you're going to win. You forced five turnovers, but you're going to give up 600 yards today. And we have an injured player down for Oklahoma State. As we take a look at our updated focus points for OSU. Well, offense, they're rolling. Defense, obvious what they've been doing. They're rolling from a turnover standpoint. And, you know, defense, I mean, Baylor did fake the pun on them. You know, Baylor went for it six times on fourth down. Um, obviously, Oklahoma State's up 59 to 17, but we had a coach speak this week as well. You know, Art Browse is a guy right with the Texas high school. Very entertaining guy to talk to. Cooper still down for Oklahoma State. Well, we'll take a look at Coach Speak for this week. Yeah, and this was, we are a big play team, but to win, we have to also be a small play team. And let's think back now. Headed on the goal line the first drive. And I'm talking, he, what he's talking about here is short yardage. Are we physical enough to punch it in? They haven't been physical enough on those small play plays, even though they have 600 yards offense, to make a difference. That's pretty good saying, though. That's pretty applies to this game. Griffin will try the lob to right jump ball that's for Kendall be, Wright. That's got to be got offensive it. pass interference, doesn't it? A flag is down. That's Wright made the catch, and it will go against Wright. Pass interference on the offense, number one. 15-yard penalty, second down. This one's pretty obvious. The ball's in the air. I mean, the defender has a chance to play it as well. Watch Kendall. Uh. They pushed him and knocked his shoe off. <laughs> you got to give that I, defensive guy I, a chance. This game's tough enough. I would call the shoe incidental contact, but I agree with you. He was... Certainly warding off Larry Stevens, so the penalty goes against Kendall Wright. This red zone fiasco continues late into the evening. Well, for it, it was the kind of game we expected. Basically, when you add up all the yards, you could have taken the ball and turned this game into college football overtime. Just keep putting the ball in the 25 yard line. And there's a drop. As Wright couldn't hold on, or check that, Williams couldn't hold on. So, I mean, you, you could have taken the ball and put it on the 25-yard line for each team and just said, who's going to do a better job from here executing and getting the ball into the end zone? Because Baylor, when they have had time after time, opportunity after opportunity in the scoring zone, especially in the first half, they either failed or turned it over. Griffin just throws one up for grabs. Another interception. Flag down in the offensive backfield. Larry Stevens gets the pick. And Griffin is shaken up. On a defense number 50, contact to the quarterback's face mask at the distance of the goal. First down. That's the third time Oklahoma State has been called for a roughing the passer penalty. And Mike Gundy disagrees. Good call, though. Blatnick got his hand up on the face mask of Griffin. Yeah, I think the fans, if they'd have called face mask, 
would have understood that maybe a little bit better than roughing the passer. I mean, it clearly was a face mask penalty. Well, the referee did say that. Yeah, he, he said did. it's roughing the passer, contact to the quarterback's that's face what, mask. That's what I'm saying. I mean, but I think there would have been less aggravation by the fans if, in fact, it was a face mask, because it was. Vasco Martin to about the six yard line. crowd that is here is still booing loudly apparently 59 to 17 isn't quite good enough at this point wouldn't you be out at your tailgate with a hot dog in your hand just enjoying the afternoon well this team's entertaining to watch they really are I can see why they stick around because with this defense causing these turnovers Griffin that's waffled at about the two yard line a yard shot the first down It'll be third down to about a yard and a half just inside the two. Here's where you're Bill Young. You know, you leave those starters in here on defense. Unless one of them gets hurt. Yeah, that's it. That's that's the problem. And we've got another Cowboy shaking up. This time it's James Thomas. Well, while the injury timeout takes place, let's take a look at not only what remains for Oklahoma State, but also what remains for the other top two teams in the BCS. Now they will play each other next week. LSU at Alabama still to come after that game for LSU. Arkansas awaits and then maybe a trip to the SEC championship game. And the road pretty tough for Alabama as well. They have to play the Iron Bowl on the road even if they beat LSU and then who knows they might be in the SEC championship game for Oklahoma State it could very easily come down to the Bedlam game the last weekend of the season. Obviously the best chance. Well, the other two have no chance to go undefeated, both of them. Ganaway moves the pile. That might be good for a first down. This game started this way, and this game's gonna end this way with Baylor at the same exact spot on a fourth down trying to score. I'm not sure Ganaway got the best spot there. And it will be fourth down at about a half yard. Right, they can pick up a first down inside the yeah. one. This is unbelievable right here. Isn't it? it comes down to this after all of this this afternoon. Now do you run it right here if you're right, Browse? I think you run the ball. They did again away. Tried to leap over the pile. He might have a might first, have down, first down. And Mate smacked him, but it is a first down. He didn't get to the goal line, but he got to the first down marker with 2.20 to go. So now it's first and goal. <laughs> they might get five total cracks at it from inside the one yard Our line. Our Browns is tempted to run a naked bootleg right here. You know, they've been bringing the linebacker hard off the edge, number 11. See if he comes with just a bootleg and tricks him right here. How about Baylor about to run their 104th offensive play of the game? And trying to get into the 20s in terms of points. Just imagine if Oklahoma State had 103 plays. And now Art Browse has to call a timeout. Oh, as the play clock was all the way down inside of five. They've had a lot of miscommunication in short yardage. We'll step aside for just a moment here in Stillwater. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC. Presented by Kay Jewelers. Welcome back to Stillwater. Number three, Oklahoma State. And they are guaranteed, most likely, unless a shocking development takes place in the next 10 days or so, to be no worse than number two in the BCS standings with Alabama playing LSU next week. After the timeout on first and goal, Robert Griffin tries to sneak for a Baylor touchdown. And it looks like he was stopped short. Did the ball pop out? A couple of players, including Amade for Oklahoma State's defense, thought that they got another loose ball inside the one yard line. They have struggled in short yard. You know, you take that shotgun quarterback and put him under center and then try to run the sneak. Now Griffin moves over. Some final instructions for his fullbacks. Tries to sneak again. This is unbelievable. 
And again, with some second effort, it looked like he might have gotten to the goal line, and now a flag comes out. Griffin's helmet comes off, still no signal. It might have been a touchdown. Looked like the line judge on the near side finally did signal touchdown, and a flag came out as Griffin lost his helmet. on a defense number 22. That penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. Well, you can get ready for the onside kick now. At 59 to 23. <laughs> it's never easy, is it? Aaron Jones adds the point after. It's 59 to 24 with 106 to go. A 21 play touchdown drive for Baylor. So if we update the Big 12 standings, Kansas State falls to Oklahoma. So Oklahoma will move inside of the top eight at the very least as they drub Kansas State this afternoon. Oklahoma State, the only undefeated team remaining in the Big 12. Let's go down to Janine. Well, Bob, you know, back in 1995, Mike Gundy was fired for the first time from a coaching job. And he was out of work for a while. He moved his family to Maryland. He actually almost went into selling insurance. And that's when Les Miles called him to come back here to Oklahoma State and work for him. What was that job he was fired from in 1995? It was Baylor. Oklahoma 58, Kansas State 17. Uh-oh. Nine three remaining in the what do you think, Bob? Onside kick right here. I can't imagine you would try an onside kick I down 59 will. to 24. Let's yeah, you might need Aaron this Jones onside kick deep. later in the season. <laughs> Smart play by Gilbert to simply take a knee and barring Art Bryles calling timeouts. Clint Shelf, who we saw earlier before the 21 play touchdown drive for Baylor, ate up most of the rest of the clock, warming up over on the sideline. He might be asked to do nothing but go out and engineer the victory formation. Now, yeah, I guess the question. He's glad to just get a couple crumbs. I mean, he's been standing over there since the 10-minute mark, just looking for a crumb to fall his way. Nice, nice to put your helmet on on homecoming weekend yep. and get in the game for a few snaps. Now, Coach, big picture for Oklahoma State. Can you continue to play Boy. the way they're playing? Can you continue to count on your defense providing the takeaways that Oklahoma State's defense has given them every single week? Well, we said in the open, it's not the old school plan for success. Obviously, I mean, you win championships. We've always been told with defense. They keep doing it, but at some point that is going to run out on them. You just can't keep creating that many turnovers. The only undefeated season in Oklahoma State history was in 1945. They beat St. Mary's of California in the Sugar Bowl that year and ended up 9 and 0. And they are now 8 and 0 for the first time since then. Say this, even if their defense doesn't create as many turnovers, I think they're good enough on offense to outscore most any team in this country. I mean, they can There's score no on offense. But part of their success is they take anywhere from a plus two to a plus five turnover ratio and turn that into a bunch of points. And you wonder against really good teams like in Oklahoma, I mean, could you possibly play the game counting on that? Yeah, there ain't no having used that same formula. It'll be interesting to see if it continues. Well, still in all, a very impressive win for Oklahoma State. 8-0 for only the second time in school history. 59-24 is your final. And Brandon Whedon's team could celebrate a very impressive win with only four games to go in their season. And speaking of four games, we've got four more really good games for you tonight on our ESPN networks, including two at 8 o'clock regional coverage of Clemson and Stanford, both on the road. So long from Stillwater.